going again. All right, let's move this over to here. Trying a different location of the phone today. Let's make sure we're all in the same spot. Oh my goodness, I tell you. Professional here, right? Hey, look, I even remembered to plug in my microphone. So as you're coming in, tell me if you can hear the fan with the wind tunnel. And if you can, I'll turn it down. Oh, that's not going to work. Hold on. These floor, they put... Hi, Jackie. Sounds good. Excellent, because it's warm in here. I have the fan going. I have to move this again. I forgot about the floor. They put a plastic wooden floor down on... There's Miss Mocha on top of the, I don't know, tile floor or something here. And I forgot every time I take a step, it moves. So bear with me. Yep, yep, yep. Bear with me. Bear with me. There we go. Oh, that should work. You can see the sewing machine. You can see where I'm working. Okay. I plugged in the microphone today. Almost forgot again. And it was sitting right there where I plugged the phone in. Okay, guys. Good thing this is free, right? If you had to pay money for this, whoosh. That would just be horrible. Tuck my microphone off. How is everyone? Jody. Wow, you left the pool. That sounds like fun, too. You're here nice and early. Just pulling this through. Pulling it through. Hi, Sue. Sue's made it, too. Sue's nice and early. I don't know what happened. I had two live streams on my phone, one for 2 o'clock, one for 3 o'clock. The 2 o'clock one was facing the wrong way, so thankfully the 3 o'clock one was the one that I needed. Oh, let me do my little spiel. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. It's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me. This is a live stream video. During a live stream, I do a lot of chatting. I get sidetracked, get onto a different discussion. Sometimes I read the comments. If you can't find the comments for the live stream, I have a video tutorial for that. You can just search for it on my channel. If you're watching this on a replay, thanks so much for watching the replay. I appreciate it. If you're getting a lot of advertisements and a lot of breaks for the ads, please let me know either in a comment or you can send me an email and then I'll go back through and I'll change it. YouTube puts in whatever they feel like putting in that day and sometimes they feel like having ads every three minutes. Uh, the other thing is, okay, I have the ads turned off during the live stream because that is super annoying, but I'll turn the ads on once we're done. I also got rid of that little heart down there by the chat box because that annoys me too. I can never, I'm always reading the bottom message that's the newest one, and I can never see it because there's always a heart in the way, and I don't want to accidentally press the heart. All those hearts do is say, hey Robin, we love what you're doing. You can put hearts and 100% and thumbs up. And half the time I'm not looking anyway, so I don't see them. So I appreciate anyone that sends the hearts, but I got rid of them. So let's say hi to Beverly. Oh, welcome. Beverly's here for the first time. A big round of welcome, welcome. I'm glad you can come and hang out with us today. Ronnie has made it. Charmaine is here. Oh, I'm glad you can hang out with us a little bit, Charmaine, while waiting for your son's flight. They're always delayed, aren't they? Hi, Susan. Maine is pretty cold. It's 69 here, so it's a beautiful outside temperature, a little bit cool. Jeans, t-shirt, maybe a long sleeve t-shirt or something. Inside the house, it's warm because there's no windows here to open. So hopefully, you guys said the fan doesn't sound too loud. Oh, look, I found a a thingy. Oh, we got cats coming in and out the door. Sharon's here from Tucson, Arizona. It is 68 now, but supposed to reach 78. We had a little bit of a warm weather. It reached a little over 70. Today is Friday, so this weekend, Sunday, is supposed to be another cold front, and the temperature is supposed to have a feel-like temperature of 30. 
which is kind of chilly for this far south in Florida. But then don't worry because Florida style on Tuesday or Wednesday, it's supposed to be 80 degrees again. It's crazy. <laughs> Poor Jody. Jody, you're still looking for people to hang out with at the Sew Expo. I don't know when that's going to be. Hi, Becky. How are you doing? I wasn't sure what we were going to do today. Then I was actually thinking about Jody, And I saw this fabrics with the browns and golds. And I know she likes browns. So I thought I would work on a little quilt as you go zipper pouch. You guys seem to prefer these in the shop over just standard fabric. And I was thinking, you know what? I don't blame you too. A lot of times you can just get this like a uh, bumblebee fabric in anyone's shop, but you can't always get scrappy from everybody. So it's nice to have a little variety. Excuse me, a variety. Hi Kay, hi Lynette, Western Pennsylvania. Down in the teens in Dallas with Lynette. Sharon's not going. Sorry, Jody. My daughter Miranda's in Maryland. She had a few inches of snow the other day for the first time when she got off work at whatever time when it's darkish out. And then this morning she woke up to about six inches of snow. Uh, they're such sweethearts there because at work they told her, you know, you can come in a little late, you Florida gal. You've never really driven in snow. Wait for the roads to be plowed, and we'll see you a little bit later. I thought that was very sweet of them. Hi, Janice. I'm so glad you could catch a live. Davenport, Iowa. My daughter was just in Davenport not that long ago at the Mission Barbecue. Six degrees. I was so happy that she got out of there before you guys got that nasty storm. Last weekend of the month, no takers. Ugh. Yeah, I thought they might be. And you know, the strangest thing is I am using, let me show you the color that I'm using for the thread. I opened up my thread box to get a brown or a creamy tan out to do the quilt as you go. The first thread I touched was a green. But because gold, I guess when it gets, I don't want to say corroded or whatever it is, it gets out in the air and stuff, it turns that bronzy greeny color. It's just working out perfectly for this fabric because of the different sparkles and stuff in it. I'm only doing the quilt as you go where you put the piece down, sew it, and do one line because otherwise we'd be sitting here for days doing the kind that I like where you do like a quarter of an inch matchstick quilting on it. I started one, but I thought we would go ahead and start a second one together. Hello to everyone I missed. I never want anyone to leave a live stream. And if you pop in and I don't see you and say hello, I'm really sorry. You can even yell at me in the comments and I will apologize and say hello to you in the comments on the replay. But sometimes I get involved in sewing and I forget to look up. So we've got cold Texas. Charlie's here. I'm oh, so glad you guys can all join us. I love seeing new names and new people pop up. Hello, Deborah. Guys, I have some exciting news. Let's just start this out right. We found a house. Yoo-hoo, we found a house. We signed a contract. It's ours. But okay, so here's the thing. I always had problems before I got married. My maiden name was Birch, and we had Murphy's Law, and we had the big sign up, and it was always all the Birches have issues. And then I got married, and I'm all alone, and Lalone has Murphy's Law problem. If something bad or something could go wrong, it's going to go wrong. So we got the house. People are currently living in it, so it's not available till February 18th. But when the people move out, Depending on what the house looks like, we might not be able to move in for weeks afterwards. My daughter and I, I've been going after these houses and looking at them. They haven't had many new ones pop up, so I'm looking at them, researching how far are they from my daughter's work, you know, where is the nearest Walmart, a Circle K gas stations, different things like that. Check in what's in the neighborhoods. We were given a certain road to look for, so how close are we to that road? Went through all of this. We went back and forth on these three houses, and we picked a house that we don't know if we can ever move in. 
So we have a house, but we're homeless. <laughs> so well, I don't know. I'm just going to cross my fingers that the renters are leaving it in good shape and that they're not going to have to do a lot of work before we can move in. Because I'd like to get there for February 18th, but it might not be until the middle of March. My daughter did get a little nervous because they pulled the house from the site, which we knew they would. They told us that. But you can still click the link. And it says it doesn't come available till April 21st. I told my daughter, it's okay. Maybe they just throw a date in, a really far off date. It, it, maybe it, it can't be that bad, right? I mean, we can't have that kind of luck. If it's going to be like that, we'll just choose, you know, house number two. And we'll just say, hey, maybe the universe is telling us that that's not the house for us. Right? We're just, at, at this point, I'm just going to pack it up and we're going to get whatever. You're right. And we'll just, we'll get one of those, okay, rent it for, maybe we'll do, I don't know, Airbnb or something. I, I'm like, I've had enough of this. And my poor daughter, I know she's had enough. And she wants to just stop traveling for a little bit and then get to Arizona and just settle in. Okay, so with this quilt as you go pouch, you guys always ask me and I never have the information. So let me tell you the size batting I'm starting with. I started with a, pulled out all my scraps and then yeah, shampoo rugs, Clorox, everything, whether or not they have to paint it. Did anyone damage the floor? Did they damage the walls? Oh my God, they left food in the refrigerator and it now stinks. They're going to need a new fridge. A lot of that's little stuff. I would hope that they can get done quickly, but we'll see. If everyone can just cross their fingers and put good vibes out to the universe, we would appreciate it. I'm still going to go with the fact that we're going to leave at some point. Okay, you guys and I are all friends, right? And But this YouTube thing is out there for the whole world to see. And there are some people I don't want to know where I'm at and when I'm at and exactly. So please bear with me if I don't tell you all exactly when I leave. You can always email me if you need to know for whatever reason. I will be going down as soon as we're close enough to knowing and I will pick up, well, we have this house. So as long as I know we're keeping this house, I will figure out where the post office is. I'll go to my post office and get a PO box. So we'll at least have that much out there. Thank you so much, Charmaine. I'd love those good vibes. I'm just going to keep going. It's going to happen one way or the other. We have to go. So this house, the lease is up at the end of February. So we have to be out of here by March or you rent it month by month at a higher fee. And this company won't waive that higher fee, even if it's their fault, they don't care. And I get it, I get it, it's a really big company. So I'm gonna get a PO box, I'll put that in, and you guys, if you wanna send like cards, or hey, welcome to the new house, or glad you made it, or something, you can do that, but we'll hold off on packages or anything, because I know some of you have some little envelopes of scraps and stuff, I'm not going to get a big P.O. box because they'll just put a key in if you have a big package. So all that. My Arizona piece. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize. You guys, I am like scattered today more than usual. Rain me in. Tell me to stop if I get going too crazy and I'll back up. But Arizona peeps, I noticed when looking at houses, there's no mailboxes at the end of the road. They're all like community mailboxes. Is that normal like everywhere or is that just a surprise thing? I don't mind walking or driving to the mailbox depending on where it's at. Although I did choose house number two because the mailbox is right next door in front of a little park. That was, that was really was a strong point in me choosing it. I don't mind not getting my mail, but when it comes to mailing for the Etsy shop, I might have to put my policies like I'll mail every Tuesday and Friday or something like that. It depends on the community, Jackie. Okay. Well, in all the communities I've seen, I've gotten the address, I've gone to Google Maps, and I watched the live thing, and nobody's got a mailbox. Nobody has a mailbox. It's just foreign to me. I'm not used to it. All right, so I measured my zipper, and you guys know I like to make my zipper longer than my pouch. So my zipper, my zipper is longer than my pouch. I don't know how long it is. Where is a 10 number? So this zipper is 12 inches long, it looks like. So my pouch, I wanted a piece of batting that was more than just 9.5 inches. I want to trim it to 9.5, and, 
and I started with my standard nine and a half by five and a half, but then I decided I wanted more fabric on it and stuff. Depends on when the community was built. Oh, okay, thank you, Laura. Laura, are you in Arizona also? So this piece of batting, we'll say it's 10 by seven and a half, it looks like, but I'm gonna trim it down to nine and a half by maybe seven, depending on how much scraps I have. And I have two, so I'd started one. They're, they were actually connected and I just cut them off, so it was from trimming batting or something like that. I don't know that I have a golden brown fabric. I think I have some layer cake pieces that would work, but they're packed somewhere and we're just gonna work with what I have. So what I wanted to do was have a bunch of scraps, a solid, and then make the corners, but this is just gonna end up having to be totally scrappy. Unless I can put this down at the bottom, that might work. Let me set that aside. I also pulled out this for my lining fabric because I thought it might be fun to just have something brownish on the inside instead of a bright white. My aunt lives in Surprise and she even had weird in-ground garbage and recycle outside so it wouldn't look messy in the community. Interesting. I'm South and Gilbert, but I have been in the Easy Valley for 35 years. Okay, I know where Gilbert is. I've been, while wandering on the maps and zooming in and out, I saw Gilbert. What I want to do with the whole, not to be, excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> not to be secretive about where we, when we leave and where we live and all of that, but there are some people that I just don't want to knock on my door and show up. And no, Jody, it's not you, but yeah, I would kind of like prefer a, hey, Robin, I'm coming by, but I, there's just some people I just don't want to know my address. I don't want to just show up. So I won't be, like I said, I won't be showing the front of the house or anything, but I'll definitely show you the inside. And this house, it's got to work, knock on wood, because I feel like back and forth over and over with this house. It has a long rectangular bedroom. The windows are on one side, but when you get here, it has a giant opening for the bathroom. The bathroom has windows, it has a bathtub and a shower, but along this way, there's a wall and a little small wall before you hit the door. So I thought it'd be perfect to put my studio right there where there's no windows and not a lot of bright lights, but still lit up and it'll be out of the way so I can have a bedroom and a studio. So that's, I thought that would work out perfectly. So I'm really looking forward to it. And then the closet, it'll just be the storage of everything. I'll put shelves and stuff in there. Chandler has both community in some area. It's Sue. Oh, you're the one I'm... Yeah, Sue, I don't want you knocking on my door. Sue comes, she may never leave. <laughs> Sorry, Sue, just teasing, you know that. So I took these, I think these are two and a half inch strips for the most part. One of you guys sent them to me. So thank you guys so, ooh, look at, that's a nice wide piece for the bottom. Oh, I like that. So one of you guys sent these to me, leftovers from one of your projects. I really thought it would be fun to keep them together in a Ziploc bag so that I could play with them a little bit. And look at our, here we are, we're playing with them. So I put like a squarish bit in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, so it's not square, it's rectangle, but I just stuck it in there. And I look, I have this little piece, so maybe that little piece is the same size. Now, if I was doing this the crazy, you can you guys can knock the other, right? Knock, knock, knock. Robin, your house, is, your house is in the sunny, warm area. We're coming. Spring has come early. When I do the intense quilting, I do the matchstick quilting on this. And then I have to, first, if I pay attention, which one, if I'm going to put it right here, the quilting will go up and down, vertical. So then I know on this piece I want to quilt it horizontal just so that it's opposite of here. But I mess it up all the time so it's no big deal. You could put this one on an angle if you want. But I'm thinking about Jody. Jody, I don't expect you to purchase this. But I'm, I'm thinking about Jody when I make this. And I feel like Jody might want it to be in the center. 
You can have it off to the side, up at the top. But I feel like today Jody's feeling centered. And then I'll put this little piece next to it. I have my little palm iron. So I just want to iron that piece down to make sure I'm not dealing with any of the weird bits. Pull off some loose threads that are on there. This is a great way to use up scraps, leftover bits of, you know, charm squares or whatnot. I have my machine set at the quarter of an inch at 2.0, but I don't follow the quarter of an inch rule all the time anyways. Sometimes I'll do a little scant. Like if quarter of an inch is on the outside of my presser foot, I might go to the inside depending on the size of my fabric. So if it's a smaller piece of fabric, I might want a smaller piece of, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. I might want a smaller seam allowance. So then I'll just take this and I'll press it over. And I normally don't cut the thread so I can just spin it. And then about quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, I'm just gonna top stitch. Hi, Kim. Jody's got dibs. Jody, you want this zipper pouch you're calling dibs on it? Excellent. I haven't done anything to set up my shop for vacation mode yet. I still plan on doing it ahead of time. But if there's a thing like, Robin, I really wanted this before, you know, you close up the shop and you did it and you closed the shop and I missed it. I don't mind doing like through PayPal or something with you guys if there's something you really want. But once I pack up my shipping station, it makes it a little bit more difficult. You know I will always do things to help you guys out, but you'll just make it a little harder for me if we do that. Now I'm going to do this in, I think it's, was it the courthouse steps or the log? Courthouse steps go like this. Log cabin goes round. I'm just going to do what I want. So I can either go to here or here or obviously there. So I have this one because this one's dark and this one's not. Maybe I might, oh look, I have this one. And this one will fit here perfectly, so I'm going to go ahead and put that one there anyways. This is one of those things. Hi, Davi. I'm glad you can make it. I hope you are having a good week. This is one of those things that it's a really a do what you want. The other one that I was going to work on, I had two pulled out. Well, more than two, but what have I got going on here? But really, like I said, I was thinking about Jody, so I worked on that one. I had this fun mini quilt that needs to be worked on. I had the tropical scraps. I have this one I was going to turn into flying geese. But what I was going to work on today is the polka dots, but Jody kept pestering me. So I, I picked up the Jody one. I do that when I know what you guys like and stuff. I like to make things thinking of you whether you get them or not. I love Quilt As You Go too. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a Quilt As You Go quilt like the official way where you put the little strips and all that. Hi, Patty from Texas. We'll do that sometime coming up this year. I have a list. I tell you, I am bursting. Part of my, my coffee jitters, I don't have caffeine, is because I have so much creativity in me right now that I'm not letting it out, which it's kind of, I did it again. That's what I get for talking. Now you can take this over to the iron and give it a press or you can just finger press it. It depends on my fabric and my batting and what I'm doing. I do all of the above. I finger press it, I don't press it, I take it over. But I do like to steam it like crazy when I'm all done. I do cut my threads, but I don't always cut the stray threads. I don't know, I'm weird. So now I have this long strip so I can put one of these on, but maybe, maybe I feel like these are too wide. Oh, the plastic bags are falling. Where's the one that was iron? So if I feel like this is too wide, I can bring out, not being a quilt, we can really work with narrow fabrics this way. Hi, Coffee Alley. East Tennessee, East Tennessee. I got you. You're right there near the the Carolinas. I, I know. What do I know? What city do I know over there? 
Greensboro. So I'm going to take inch and a quarter is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to have this little bit, but I'll save it for a fabric postcard. Have you ever done rag quilts? I've done rag quilts and I've done them with the AccuQuilt Go and by hand. But you know what we're going to do? No, you don't know, Patty. That's the bad habit from the 80s. You know what we're going to do? I am going to do a rag quilt tote bag. That way we can see all aspects of it and it's a small project. We can do a rag quilt, uh, I don't know about really a table run or anything. I think like a tote bag is our best option. That way we can see all of it in one shot without having to do a giant quilt, you know? Do I make pot holders? How many layers of cotton batting can do I use making some for these? Okay. I'm going to sew this down and try to talk at the same time. I did make pot holders. We made scrappy pot holders, I think last year on this channel. And it was the first time we used the crinkly heat proof batting stuff. Do you know what I mean with that silver stuff in it? And I, I used it with two pieces. I used two pieces of cotton batting. I used one cotton batting and one insole bright. That's what it's called. Insole bright. Jackie, Jackie, you always got me. Insole bright. And I used two cotton battings and one insole bright. I used two insole brights. And I tell you, I despise. I have them all on my refrigerator right now. I use them here. I gave some to the kids and I kept some for myself because I did like all red quilt as you go. All red quilt as you go. Before I get too far down the end, I'm going to just snip off that extra bit. I keep a... Today I'm using my flower scissors. These are gingers. They're really nice, but they're a little bit heavy and they make a clunky sound when I set them down. I, by using them, I found if I want a hot pad, I do like, like two insole brights. If I want a pot holder that I can bend, then I like one insole bright and one cotton batting. So I, I can quilt, you can do quilt as you go on insole bright and you can do it on the batting. Because I tried doing it, okay, before I get to the end, I'm going to leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot, turn this, finger press it. You can lift your needle up and slide over a smidge and then do that top stitching stitch. So even if I don't do the matchstick quilting, I find that that top stitch just makes it a little, it makes it feel a little bit more quilt as you go professional looking to me. I do like a cotton batting quilt as you go top and a cotton batting quilt as you go back, but it has to be the thicker batting. One insole bright and one cotton, yeah, Sue. I, so I go back and forth. I put one insole bright and one batting in each one from my pot pad, yeah. I tend to be a very cautious, paranoid person, so I like to just go overboard, and I wanted to test out all the combinations. Hold on a second. I'm going to take my microphone off, and I'm going to go get them for you, and I'll show you what I did. Excuse me. I hope I don't bump you. Oh, it's sucking up. It's stuck on my pants. Coming back. There's a water bowl here, so I have to watch my butt, watch my pants, watch the door. Okay. Microphone on. Put it in my shirt to keep it from getting hooked on stuff. All right, so let's talk. I'm not getting burnt by the iron. Let's talk my stack. Let me see if everyone said anything. It is easier to grab, yep. So I made this a long time ago. This is the one where you fold the fabric over and over and over again. We've had this probably like eight years. I made two of them. I absolutely loathe making them, but they make great pot holders. So this one is, this one feels like two insole brights. It's not too bad. I can grab stuff still, so that works okay. This one is two cotton battings, and you can see I burn my hands through this if I hold the pizza pan too long. 
but I like to put this underneath a hot plate when I'm sitting here. I have a, a placemat and I put a hot plate this hot plate on this when I'm sitting down to eat. So that works good. This one again is two Insulbrites and it's not bad, but I have very I have very weak hands due to the nerve issues and stuff, so I have a hard time. It just wants to slide out of my hand. This one feels like an Insulbrite and a ba uh, two battings, I think, because look at how thick. And again, it does that bouncing thing. I made a lot. I use this one a lot, apparently. Again, okay, so this one is two battings. And then, yeah, I think the one batting and one insult bright really is my favorite. This is two insult brights. This one's the insult bright and the batting. You see how it's easy to squish up, but it doesn't... It's not like the purple one that it can go like this. This one is still kind of, I like it. That's what I like. Does that help at all? I hope so. And no issues with hot pads. He used, you, Becky, you said you use one and one, right? One insole bright and one batting. Yeah, that's, I'm having the problems with my kids. I took, I gave some to my kids and I took them back away from them because they didn't use them. And I think it's because they felt too thick for them to take stuff out of the oven. I want to make the gloves, the oven mitts. I don't think these things will work for me. I want the whole mitten thing. I think that'll be, I took my desk out of here and now I don't have anywhere to just stick stuff. I think that'll be like the great option for me is to have the mitt, the oven glove. You do one and one? Yeah, I think one and one is the best option for taking things out of the oven. If you want to take a burning hot casserole and stick it on your nice wooden table, I would probably do two insole brights or something like that. I watched some videos with one of the ladies from an old quilting video show here on YouTube. And she said when she makes her table runners, she puts insole bright in it instead of the batting so that you can put a hot item right on the table runner. I thought that was pretty smart. All right, so I have one here. I can balance it out by putting one here if I want. Maybe I, I'll have a little, a little run like that going. That doesn't bother me. Uh, the Insulbrite, yeah, I don't know. I bought, I bought two packages. Again, if I see something on sale and I know I'm going to use it for videos or something, I'm going to buy a couple packages. Or if I'm using it for gifts, take off that extra bit. Now, this is the way I made those pot holders. This type of quilt as you go. Yeah, no, I didn't put. I did quilt as you go, or I stitched them together, and then I quilted them some more in like an X that looks like a crosshatch. So if you have your little thread catcher, this is the good time to have it right next to you. I don't have mine right here. On the, um, the bowl cozy one, I got a really good deal on those. That was a definite good deal. So I have a limited option of fabrics, so they're all almost the same. So if I if I don't want, I mean, I could. I could put another one of these right here and just expand on it, or I can put it off to this side. But I want to look, when I do something like this, I'm going to need a piece here. And when I stitch this together in a zipper pouch, I'm going to lose some of it. So for this, I'd rather have a wide piece there and put a filler in here. So maybe, I put one of these gold guys in. There's a lot of the same fabric it looks like. So I have to have a lot of this in there it looks like. So maybe I will create A border this is a little bit different 
Remember the three time rule. You touch it three times, you have to use it. What size would this be? This should be, before I sew it together, when I trim these down, they'll be nine and a half by seven. And then I use a three eighths, three eighths inch seam allowance and I'm not gonna do that math. <laughs> So let's say a half inch on either side, so nine and a half. So it'll be eight and a half by six and a half, six and a quarter. I'm gonna do a little one inch. Jody, if you seriously want this, do you want me to put the little one inch gusset on the bottom or you want it to be a flat pouch? Because even if you don't want to purchase it, just tell me what you want and I'll make it your way anyway. You guys can all vote if you want. Then I just slide it over a little. You can have a nice piece of like novelty fabric in the center and then you can frame it with your scraps. So now I can take this piece, but now I'm thinking, okay, well if I put this piece here and I lose some of it in the seam, will I be okay with that? Yeah, I'll be okay with that. You want the gusset? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It needs a little bit of a gusset. So I like to look for all of my little bits first so I don't cut my longer strips. So if I finish a quilt or a project and I have a handful of scraps like this, I'll put them in a sandwich baggie or a Ziploc baggie. These were in a sandwich baggie that one of you guys sent me that I've been using over and over and they were in what I call my, my Barney bag. So I just pull something out of it. There's so many fun things in there, but I need a fully stocked studio to make them because they're not one and done projects. I need to find fabrics to add to it. Now, if you're doing a bunch of top stitching like this, mine, you want to you wanna purchase my, no, you can't purchase mine. Look, they're nasty. They have holes in and stuff, but there is a pattern that you can purchase for this. Look for like a, folded star pot holder or something. I was actually one of the testers. There was a batting or an uh, the little fabric you put on the back of fabric to stabilize it. It was stabilizer or whatever. There was a piece that was pre-printed and it allowed you to stitch and flip and do them. The thread catchers are the greatest because I'm always putting stuff here and then having to take out the little vacuum. If you forget to do the top stitching, you can always go back and top stitch, just back stitch at the beginning and end because I forget all the time. Okay, so this one's getting too, I don't like it. I mean, I like it, but I wanna stay more colorful. So I've got that frame and I'll add more to it. If I'm working on that, and since I've created that to be long lengths, what I'll do is I'll take all these different pieces and I'll sew them together. Maybe we should do it. You're being instructive, Robin. Be helpful. So I'll lay these out. And I'll try to match the width. And I'll add different colors and see if I can change things up. What else do I have? I have this gold guy and I don't I don't care if I'm doing a bunch because I'll just trim down the extra. So even if you have the little pieces like this, I'll pop that in somewhere to add some fun. I've got these bits so I can add them in and do just a long strip with it and it looks like you pieced, you know, as you were going and stuff. I can even add the little Quilt as you go lines, top stitching on it. I was thinking the next time I make, I want to make another mat that I would, I want to incorporate a pin cushion and a thread catcher. So now these, I'll just sew them together. But you guys, I don't know if you love it or not, but I just love sometimes uh, my kids laugh at me. They, they all ignore me now, so I have to say their name if I want them to actually pay attention to me. Because I just talk to myself, and I talk to the cat. But when you're home by yourself all the time, you have to talk to somebody. Did 
Jody, what are you going to sew this weekend? And try to keep these lined up, but it really doesn't matter that much to me. I'll just pay attention to maybe not put lights together. A baby book kid for my nephew's first birthday. Happy birthday. That's always fun. I love the baby books. Whether you baby book them or you turn them into a quilt, they're fun. I've been looking for new YouTube channels to follow. YouTube's been doing pretty good at suggesting people for me. Weekends are fun for quick gifts, quick projects, quick gifts. I, I'm going to pretend Jody asked me because, you know, she cares. So, Jody, what I plan on working on this weekend, well, probably your zipper pouch. And, ooh, no, that doesn't fit. It's too similar. I want to, I want to make something. I have, oh, I'm going to make videos. That's, oh, I'll tell you, my life. I'm going to make videos. I need to make a Patreon video. And I have 17, no, I'm just joking. I have videos that I need to edit. So, that's going to be my weekend. Have you seen the Hemingway zipper pouches with, you know, Jackie, I had a whole conversation with myself today. I have seen nothing but the original designer. I saw her when she did it on Instagram. And I tell you, everyone has jumped on that bandwagon. You cannot turn around and put YouTube on without coming across one of those tutorials. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm a fan of it. The whole thing is, from the ones I've seen, and I think the original one was they did, they quilted the whole thing, and they either had raw seams or they put the binding strips on the inside. The diagonal zipper is great, um, but you have to make the pouch big enough to leave space for when you put that binding strip when you have that diagonal you put the binding strip on here it's like putting zipper tabs on it's going to stop it from being as wide and then you have it up there now i don't do the zipper tapes i have some but i'm you know what i'm old school i am fine with a zipper so if i have to have a zipper tape situation on there i could do it without i've done a little bit of the diagonal ones before the one that so Becca made is the original one that I saw on Instagram. As far as I know, the pattern she followed was from the original one. But again, I, I've seen so many eyeglass cases and regular zipper pouches from it. I don't know, without making it to use, I don't know how I feel that way. But I'm just happy enough to make my top cut a little bit of a diagonal and put a zipper in so I have a little bit so when I have it here I want to have a little bit of fabric here so my zipper goes like this versus right into the corner there's just so many little things about it I don't like zipper tabs those irk me because it takes up that space so if it's something like that you know it just kind of bothers me She can't lift the super heavy one we bought, so I'm making, I'm taking the plastic laminated fabric and making one. I missed that. I realized today I am so full of opinions. <laughs> I've been talking to my boys, and oh, I, I just went off on rants with both of them. The girls like, hey, I think they're really popular. I think people like them. I think it's really a popular item right now. I'm actually surprised that um, Minky So Zeriano, that she hadn't come up with something like that because making the pouches with the different, well, she does have one. She showed it on Missouri Star, I believe it was her. And hers was a zipper pouch like this and she had a diagonal, but it was a standard zipper and not the um 
zipper tape one. So I'm just going to move this around so I don't have that cream right there. So I'm going to put this, kind of aim it in the middle. Now, maybe I want, maybe I want to go a little bit wonky, not too wonky. Because we're, we're, we're going to make Jody just a little bit, oh, maybe we shouldn't go wonky at all. We're making Jody sophisticated today. We're not doing wonky and crazy. So I don't want to start right at the end. I want to cut that off. You can press your seams open. You know, you can do anything you want, really, when you're making these pouches. Scooter cover. Oh, okay. I thought so too. I thought that's what she did. It's, it's again, people sometimes I'll get messages and they're like, you didn't come up with that on your own. Well, you know, there really aren't too many things that are original anymore because there's always some type of a variation out there. It's sometimes you just take it, like when I show you guys stuff, I'm like, here, you take this simple idea that I showed you, and then you can change it up and, you know, put in your own variation and create your own thing. There's very few things that I've shown you on my channel that I have 100% thought up on my own. I usually, like I tell you, I watch, when I say I watch 12 to 25 videos. I, I watch a lot of videos and then try to figure different things out and then to come with something a little different for you guys. But there's still, there's nothing wrong with, you know, showing other people's designs and all that and creating your own stuff and everything. Thanks, Jody. It rains daily here down and sideways. Yeah, you definitely need a cover. I was thinking just a seat cover, but I know what you mean by a whole cover, like you would on a grill. We're usually in a severe drought. This rain that we've been getting is just crazy. All right, so let's think that this is going to be the top of the zipper. This will be the bottom. So I will be having, whoops, whoops, whoops. So this is going to be my bottom anyway, so I don't have to put any more there. But I need to bring it this way. And I need a little skinny thing to go up here. Sometimes when I want up along the top by the zipper, I might want just one fabric. Oh my goodness, this doesn't have... Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be totally crazy. I'm going to put this on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to need to build out the sides first. Where's my, you stay here, you stay here. You come here. There we go. That's going to be on the bottom already. So do I want that? You just move it around, audition it. Does that look good? Maybe that'll look good. Kind of like that, so I'll take this piece off. Yeah, everything comes around full circle. There's things that are out there that were there before. It's like even with the kids with their new sayings, or my daughter would be like, oh, I love this song. I'm like, yeah, it's a remake from the 80s. No, it's original. He just came up with it. I'm like, no, sweetie. Here, let me give you the original. And then usually sometimes the ones from the 80s could have been a remade from our parents' generations. Yeah, I did that when you were a kid. Okay, Coffee Alley's sewing machine is skipping stitches. Have you, I know, this is like saying, did you turn the computer on and off? Take out your thread, re-thread it, or put a new spool of thread on. Same thing with the bobbin, re-thread your bobbin, a new needle, and then also clean your machine. For skip stitches on cotton fabric, it's usually the machine. Is skipping 
Now, I, I follow a lot of um, bag makers on, what do I follow them? On Facebook. So they always, they're like, if it's on the bottom, then it's something wrong with the tension on the top. Skip stitches, if you're going through thick stuff, sometimes you need a bigger needle. It's really frustrating, especially if you're in the middle of doing something that you want to get done or need to get done, or you're, I know, I, I don't want to work with vinyl. Vinyl's really cool and all, but there's a whole new thing to learn. Hand stitching leather would be fun. Denim's good, corduroy's good, but the, the nice vinyls and stuff, you have to know, is it this kind of vinyl or that kind? Does it have... You know, is it going to peel off or crack? Hi, so Terry. That's the issue, Coffee Valley. You did all of that. Now, did you try? I was watching someone. They had an entire package of needles that were bad. Like, they tried three needles in a pack of five or six or whatever, and they were all bad, and they just gave up and opened a new package of needles. And then that solved their problem. I thought, that's crazy. So now I need to go on this side. Oh, I touched that twice now. So I think this needs to be there. I'm going to cut it in half. Yeah, it's, I mean, sometimes it, it's just the manufacturer. Sometimes there's a, a an issue. Oh, it's not 4 o'clock yet, girls. Don't hover. Yeah, I know. You're so beautiful. And the bright lights, you have, like, no... <laughs> you have no pupils in your eyes. My cats are just staring at me. Now, my girls stare at me politely and paw at me. I've got them pretty well trained. My daughter's cats are... They're coming along. They're realizing that... I'm their last hope. <laughs> they better just listen to what I want and do it my way. Thread is new and doesn't matter what thread I use, cotton or polyester. Are you just stitching like on quilting cotton? I just always hope when I sit down that nothing happens because I'm not a very good troubleshooter. That's about the extent of my knowledge. And then I, I Google it to see what all the smart people say. I think this time I'll press the seam open. And then I'll stitch it down. Now this pouch might be smaller than what I originally thought. I do have larger batting. It's 10 inches instead of nine and a half. So I could have some wiggle room. But I usually don't, I never cut the lining until I'm done making the pouch outer sides. And I, unless I need it for a certain size, if it has to be 10 inches, I'll make a 12 inch. I don't know. I'm terrible about that. Oh, yeah, that, that could be too. Yeah, the thread, whether or not... I got lucky mine today is in my machine. I very seldom get to put it in my machine. I usually have it in the thread holder because it's too big. But you're having that problem with all of the threads. Doesn't matter what thread I use, cotton or polyester. Sewing on quilting cotton, you've changed the needle, you've changed the bobbin, you've cleaned your machine. Took almost all the machine apart, cleaned, oiled, and put it all back together. You know, when I do that, I, I know I don't have an answer for you, and I'm sorry, but w at least at the end, I think, okay, my machine, once it's back up and running, well, at least it's clean and oiled, right? I've gotten that far. But that doesn't solve the problem why you're trying to do it. Second reason why I like having a second machine, because when the first one is misbehaving, I put it in timeout and I ignore it until I can figure out its deal. A 
the palm iron, I mean, it's fine. It's extremely hot. But I really am a steam kind of gal. I like to have a lots of steam. Speaking of irons, late last night, watching Instagram before bed, instead of, you know, falling asleep and dropping my phone, instead of going to bed, I'm on Instagram. Have you seen the new Tula Pink Oliso iron? Tula Pink was on doing a live stream or something, and she was unboxing her new iron that she designed with the Oliso people. Oh my God, that thing is gorgeous. It has all kinds of pinks and stuff. And what just gets me is it's just, okay, it's like Robin in an iron, all the bright colors and the pinks, and it's fun. And in the, the water spout, oh, oh, sorry, the water tank here, it's got like fishies on it or something. So it looks like there's fish swimming in the water vessel. And on the bottom, it says, do not feed the fish. It is adorable. It has the big one and the little one. I tell you, I was looking. I almost bought new irons last night at like 9, 10 o'clock at night because if they'd have had the big one and the little one in stock, they here's my credit card. Take all my money. Please take my money. I want those. I was looking at the purple irons and the pink irons and the aqua irons, and they're cute. But that tulip pink one? Oh, congratulations. I've never had one, but oh. A little iron is great for projects like this. Plus, there's no steam, and I don't have to fill it up. And if I keep it over there. Oh. I don't know. I'm sorry. I cleaned my old Singer 201 and was sewing pockets on my husband's t-shirt darn thing just stopped working i need to make a video to show group of face yeah i don't i don't really know oh i don't know if you can get it on i don't i didn't even look on amazon i did look on etsy and i understand why shops do it but it's already more expensive it's not a standard oliso if you want to contribute, you can use the Kofi button down below in the description box and just put a note in it that it goes to the iron. And if you want to contribute that way. But if you go to the Oliso or just go to Etsy and search, I when I get it, I'm going to get it from the Oliso website because the Tula Pink, the regular ones are like 200 and the Tula Pink is two and a quarter because it's so custom and everything like that. I totally understand. But if you go to Etsy, it's like 275, 265, and I know they mark it up to make money, but I don't know. I just when I'm counting the pennies and I'm going to splurge, I'm not always going to I'm going to support the original place that designed it and not necessarily just some random Etsy shop that I googled. The little irons are $60 normally and hers is 85. So like I said, it is an investment. But I'm thinking that this is a business, the things I do and stuff that the more I do what I do, the more I feel it's okay to get the good tools. Let me tell you, these, okay, these scissors are great. The Ginger ones, they're heavy. I don't use them that much. I feel like they're for dressmaking and stuff. I've been using Dollar Tree scissors all along and happy with it. Someone was very sweet and gifted me the Kai scissors, and that's it. I, the Dollar Tree ones are for opening up bags of cereal. I rarely pick up a Dollar Tree pair of scissors anymore to do anything, not quilting-wise. Those Kai scissors are just unbelievable. When you switch from just a regular quilting ruler to one that doesn't slip, when I use the, what have I got? Why do I forget the name? The creative grids, it just, I can see the numbers. It's got the lines and everything is just perfect. It's just amazing. So as I get doing things and the more I'm working with you guys, I feel like the more, not that I deserve or I've earned or I need, but it just makes things so much easier and more enjoyable when you have the right tools and the good tools. But I still, I'm still using the same Ofa one for years and years and years. I love it. Kai rules. Yeah, go directly to the source. It's... 
oh, Davi, you just got to go see it. You don't, when you have one already, it's great. I wouldn't buy a second one at those prices, but it's like, oh, the light's shining on it. And it, plus she's infects, infectious. Tula Pink pulls it out of the box and she's all happy and excited. And you just can't help but to smile. So here's the top piece. This one's going to... The bottom piece is currently two inches, so most of it will go underneath. And this top piece will go folded into the zipper when everything's sewn. So it won't show a lot. I would put the Kai, I would definitely put the Kai scissors. I have them <laughs> underneath the pot holders and underneath the bags that I just showed. I have two out of three. One of them's already kind of packed. All right, pot holders. And my sweet friend that sent them to me told me to make sure I keep them in these plastic things because they are like sharp. You could kill someone with these. And I use these. I cut zippers with these. When So Sweetness, the weekend Sunday girl that does all the bags and stuff said cut. She cuts uh, zippers with hers all the time, and it, she hasn't even sharpened them in years, so I still do that. Now, these I'm more, these are for, like, little intricate things and stuff like that. Someone also said, they watched me struggling in a video. They bought me the Karen K. Buckley. They sent me these, and these, again, if it comes with a protector, you do it. Whoop, Mocha's going spazzy. The point on these are incredible. These, when you're clipping, you put a zipper in the tote bag and you gotta cut to the corner for whatever reason through a lot of thicknesses. This just snips through like five layers, like butter. It just, it is amazing. I pick these up even over the Kai from when I'm doing those things. And then I have a Dollar Tree one that I can use for, again, cutting cereal bags open and stuff like that. They're amazing. It's amazing what a tool that is meant for us, for your craft and hobby, does it. Karen K. Buckley, those scissors are, I, I gotta tell you, they're amazing. When I start working on cross stitch and embroidery again, it's going to be really helpful. <laughs> I like the mini from the Oliso because it sits in that little the silicone thing and I've seen people hanging on the wall from that I thought that was really kind of nippy you guys realize we're never going to finish this pouch today right do you want me to finish this on February 1st live stream or you want me to finish it and maybe record a video and pop that up one day or do you guys want to stay here and just see how long it takes us because I can't stop talking and reading I was using my rotary cutter to cut the scissors, but then with the Kai scissors, and I, and I was being the thing where these are expensive scissors. I should be careful with them. Uh, you know, someone spent good money and sent them to me. I should treat them properly. And then I found out I don't have to treat them properly. So, yeah, I kind of went a little crazy, and I cut my zippers with it, and it's been fine. They're nice and sharp, and they can be sharpened. Keep staying? All right, we'll just keep going, and as you guys start disappearing, you'll either... Okay, I will keep sewing and try... I'm not going to try to not talk. Forget it. I will keep sewing, and even if I'm the only one left here and y'all left me, you guys can come back and watch the second half of the replay. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Now let me show you something here and I'll tell you how it bothers me and doesn't bother me. We all have those little things. Now there's a, there's a bother me and I take it apart and fix it and there's a bother me and I don't care. Jody, you tell me if you really want this, if this bothers you. So I have the top stitching in all of these, but I didn't top stitch here. So you know what? I'm going to show you how to fix it. We're here. Let's fix it. No, I can't. Well, I'm not going to fix it. Sometimes I just get crazy. So I have these over here that I didn't stitch. So what you can do is see how this one doesn't have a piece here. I can go ahead and start here and backstitch and start here and backstitch and then put my piece on. 
So if I wanted to here, the cats are hitting the tripod like crazy. So I can take, that looks fine to you, great, then I won't fix it. If you want me to, I will, I don't mind. So I could take this off and do the same thing here. Now if I find out way back here, I'll just go ahead and backstitch and then backstitch. Because the back of this, it's not like a quilt that we're doing quilt as you go where you can see both sides. You won't have to bury threads or anything like that. But with this dark fabric, it doesn't bother me. I always tell you guys, if I'm going to put it in the shop, I want to have it to be a certain thing. It doesn't have to be perfect, just Robin perfect. So if something irks me and I keep looking at it and thinking about it, see, I put it over there. I'm not thinking about it. This kind of reminds me of the buckle of a belt. And then, you, you know, you put the, yeah. Anyway, now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. So if it bothers me and I think about it three, four, five times, I'm thinking about it tomorrow because I set it down for a bit. I'll come back and do it again and fix it. Otherwise, I just leave it. So this one, we're going to figure that this is the bottom. So I'm going to put this top as the top. And then, I mean, it's going to be on the back, so we don't have to match. This could be the front or the back. And once I make it, even if I call one the front and one's the back, you can flip it around. It's a zipper pouch. Whether the zipper goes one way or the other way, it doesn't really matter. I put zippers in backwards all the time. So now we need to work on this. So sometimes I like to put this centerpiece on the diagonal so I don't end up doing this thing. Or I'll start with the centerpiece off center so that I can do some patchwork over there. So if you're working and maybe you have, I'm playing pretend here. Maybe you have a really bad half square triangle. So you can go ahead and sew that in also if you want. You know, if you have just some weird pieces and these little pieces that I've been cutting off and stuff, I can stitch those on. Then we can match it to the other side and not quilt it properly. See how I mix things up to get things out of my way? This is garbage. Rehydration time. I like this greeny gold one. This is what really Oh, it's in the center. It's what made me pull out that green thread and keep it after I pulled it out. This side doesn't have a lot of the creamy stuff, so I'm going to add some of that in. Maybe I'll add a strip right there. Because after I put this strip on, I still need to have room up top to put some of this for the zipper. So I might take well, this piece, that'll work. That's nice and small. Remember, grab your smaller ones so you can use your longer ones where you want to, like when you're making string quilts. Yeah, I just it all depends on what you want. Not everyone can leave it, and not everyone even cares in noticing. Sometimes I've taken pictures, put it in the shop, I've sold the item, and while it's in my hand and I'm using a lint roller, I go, oh, oops. I might have mixed, uh, missed a whole line of quilting or something, but you know what? Somebody saw the pictures, somebody liked it, they saw it in the videos. I am not going back as long as it's not a structural issue. If it's something that's going to make your quilt or your bag or your pot holder or whatever you're making fall apart, then you have to fix it. And you can also make this, I was thinking, if you didn't want a wide pouch, you needed a tall one for, do they have what the, the Kindles? Is there like a Kindle Nook still, or I'm really dating myself? Little iPad mini mini, I don't know how many of those are to put it in that way or this way, however way you want to go. All right, so I want to go this way, and I want the patchwork to go this way again. So I can look, I can have, oh, I can do the whole thing there. Look at that. I'll put that there. Maybe I need to have one of these down here. Oh, that might do the whole thing. I have skinny bits. 
Mm -hmm. My son Robbie's been buying candles, and he's in the he's in the next room this way, and then the bathroom is a Jack and Jill right behind me. So I can, whenever he opens his door one way or the other, I can smell his candle. It's kind of nice. My asthma doesn't allow me to really have a candle in the, oh, that's nice. I don't think we've used that anywhere. Oh, no, a little bit. I think we need this. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. I'm going to leave it here so maybe I won't forget about it. So yeah, he's been putting the candles and stuff. It's been really nice. No, oh, I think it needs to lighten up a little bit. It's been also nice because when he uses them up, he gives me the empty jars. So they're really, they're like this red, rusty color. And then he's got a pink one that he's using now that has a really nice shape to it. I like jars. So then you press it. This pouch is like this. I think it's fun if you if you make something, if you make a quilt for someone, you can give them a pouch to go with it, or you can keep the pouch as a reminder. I like the idea of a fabric postcard. I wonder what that was. Hello? Well, that was a crash out there. I think the cats did something. <laughs> I'm going to add this piece on even though I'm going to cut it off. Just Do I have to? No, I don't. I can just add that on. It doesn't have to be the whole length. So, yeah, I like I like to collect jars to put little things in, like the bobbins and stuff like that. Are you going to put a wrist strap on this pouch? Ooh, I don't know. Did you hear that? I heard that too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't hear any screaming or anything. No cats came running in here. Miss Mocha is just kind of looking out the window. I, don't, I mean, maybe Robbie did something. I don't know. I don't know. Jody, am I putting a wrist strap on this? It would have to be a scrappy one. If I have enough scraps left over, I could. Jody says, no, I'm not putting a wrist strap on this. Thank you for asking. She just wants to store something or another in it. Now, this one, I can see it's already a little crooked or my batting is crooked. So this is too much, but I'm going to kind of center it. And then I'll trim off the excess. I try to stitch just past the whatever piece I put on and not just because I'm putting fabric down, I'm not stitching it. So then that way I can stop right at the edge. And then when I iron it, I'm sorry, I'm hiding all of my ironing from you. I'm not doing fancy ironing. It's more violent pressing hard. Then I can trim this extra. It would add a little bulk, and since I'm putting dark at the top, probably, it, it really wouldn't matter. Can you just picture the quilt that this came from? Someone made something, and these are their leftovers. I don't know what they made. Cats are very naughty. Five cats in this little house. I mean, the square footage of the house is great. It's a it's a three bedroom with a den, office, whatever. So it's not a small house, but there's not a lot of community space for five cats that don't like each other. And my daughter's two cats get very mad because I don't. Bye, Jody. Enjoy your swim. I thought you were already swimming. All right, bye, Jody. Go swim. We'll keep on working on this, making choices for you. I try not to let my daughter's cats in here. They sneak in when I'm sleeping because I leave the door propped open a little bit. 
then my girls do like to go out. S'mores sleeps in my daughter's room a lot. So, oh, look at that was a little. <sighs> okay, we're going to fix this. See this little bit right there? I'm going to fix that because I can. So if I put this like this and I fold, I've got a little hem edge folded on that. And then I fold, I need an iron. So I just fold down the little edge and just tuck it down so I got a straight edge. Because I, I don't want to have any seams showing. I should have put the second piece on like I originally thought. And I do this to myself all the time. So if I'm going to put this down, and I need this side right here, put a little, Jody left, she'll never know. Oh, the bag is for swim, I'm sorry. And here I am whispering, oh, Jody left. Because I thought you said you went swimming already. That'd be nice, you could put your phone and your keys and whatever in there. So since, I mean, I could pull this back and stitch it, but it's good to know how to fix other things. So I can put this back and bring it forward, or I can just lay this down and top stitch both down. But I'm going to be a good girl. And I'm going to seam rip this. And I'm going to do it in a different way. There's always a different way to do something, right? You can always do different things. The whole thing with top stitching on here really allows me to, you know, hide a lot of my oops. No mistakes, just oops, just different ways of doing things. Running late, but I made it. Hi, Cheryl. We are making, apparently we're making a scrappy zipper pouch for Jody to take to swim when she does her exercise swims to keep her sanity and her body going. So I'm going to stitch a little seam on here, and I still, I'm going to have to do a little magic, I'm sure, but for now, we're going to do that, bring that out, and then I have to stitch it back to here, so basically I'm just doing a partial seam. Go back to where I'd already stitched, line up, back stitch and stitch a new seam. Voila. I heard you. Same for me. <laughs> We're talking about allergies. I missed it. Oh, no animals in my bedroom due to allergies. Yeah. Well, I ha I'm actually very allergic to cats, but what the heck did I do there? I stitched it too much, too deep of a seam. I did uh, the allergy shots for two and a half years before my asthma said, no more, we can't do those. Hey Robin, why don't you just go ahead and take this project and make it more complicated by talking and messing it up and not doing what your gut tells you. When I stitched it, I went with too deep of a seam allowance so it made this weird puckery spot no big deal no big deal I have a seam ripper this time I will pay more attention I will stitch from the other end in. Now take that. Oh, now what you gonna do? Now I can see the seam. Open it up. Because this new piece I was putting on kept puckering and folding and doing a weird thing. So I'll go into the seam allowance. Look, don't mess with Robin. Make sure all the seams are going in the same direction. Ha ha ha, I tell ya. Oh, did you not want those little threads in there today? Let's take those out. There we go. There's another reason why I like to have a good steamy iron afterwards. Now, if I was doing all of the matchstick quilting, then I would definitely just quilt it like crazy so it wouldn't matter. But this time, 
I'm going to go ahead and stitch these uh, top stitching just because we didn't do it before and I'll, I'll do it now. So I will come right to where the top stitching is. I'll drop my needle down. I didn't have to bring my thread up. I don't know why I did. Back stitch. And then... Whoop. And then I might even totally cheat and come from the other side. And then when I get up to that top stitching part, I will peek my nose in really close and make a funny face. And when I get on the top stitching, I'll ride that top stitching. Or I'll ride next to it and make it look like that on purpose. And then I'll come out. I believe if you crinkle your eyes and stick your tongue out and make funny faces, it makes everything work out so much better. Now this part's going to be mostly in the seam. Bye Charmaine. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. So I think I'm going to top stitch on that too, just for fun. Because I can. Because I can. And this time I think I'll start in the batting and I'll go down and I'm going to go on the next side of it and then just stitch down there. There we go. And then that's done. I like to trim off anything extra as I see it just so that one I can use that and two this our, yes our top. So then um, I know where the edge is and I'm not trying to add extra. So now if I had something fun, I could put one big fun piece here. Like if I wanted to, if I weren't using this on the bottom, maybe I would add a little piece here and then add a, a large strip or something. But I have this that I wanted to use. And then can add that and if I do a scant seam allowance that might fit on there let's pop a movie on listen to an audiobook watch some of Robin's YouTube videos you know whatever whatever keep you going I really you know I, I really just don't like I don't like finger pressing it's like nails on a chalkboard to me so then I can have that. Is that going to be the good size? That'll be a good size. And I have this bubble here, so maybe I might want to alternate it up here. So I have, you know, this is things I tell myself. I have the visual of these two going up, like bubbles and stuff like that. Whatever, you know. For those of us that talk to ourselves, y'all get it, right? You understand. You know my bit of craziness. You've been here for a while. And this time I did not do anything, but when I'm doing this seam, I could top stitch here. And then on the opposite side, on one side of that seam, I can stitch down. And then I can spin back around and I could put another about an eighth of an inch away. And then if I want, I can back stitch a little and meet up with my original top stitching. And then, boom. Really, you're just playing. Ow, ow, ow. If this is bad, I demand Greek key top stitching. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Those are the ones that go like this, right? I thought I saw that on the sewing machine. I know it's on a sewing machine. I've seen that before. Anyway, um, if I say, oh, Robin, I look at this the next day and I'm like, oh, Robin, I feel so sorry for you sometimes. You have issues. Turn it into a potholder. Because if, if you're at my house, it's going to hit the burner. It's going to go in the oven and get dropped down below and it's not going to really matter. It's going to get ugly anyway. So if you, oh, Robin, some days we wonder about you. You poor thing. So whatever it takes 
Sometimes it's just like this. Oh, you know what? You can also donate this somewhere. There's always someone that, look, Jody likes it, right? Or she's just being very kind. But if you make something that you don't like, I bet you, I bet you, unless you really did something strange, someone else is going to love it. I love these kind of pouches. These are my favorite. I'm kind of coming around to the browns. I'm trying to use all the rainbow colors. I'm coming around, but... Oh, you know what? I do have more of this fabric. I get to visit my bestie and her one-year-old granddaughter. I hold... I don't have... Bye, Jody. Have fun. Give hugs and kisses and squeezes. I do have another package that came with this. It, I don't know if it was 10 inch squares or just bits of a yardage that came with it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to look and see because I don't have a lot here. I think they're both going to be about the same. So I'm good there. So I can put the top and bottom pieces on. So all of this, all of this chaos can go back in a zipper pouch and I'll do another project with it. See, we still have tons of fabric left. I'll put this across the top for my zipper. I always like to give a little extra because as you can see, I tend to have some oops and have some issues and things shrink and move and I don't realize it. Sometimes when you top stitch or whatever, things can happen. So I'll put this one on. But I really like the ones with the, I love matchstick quilting or the crosshatch. Those are my two favorite right now. I do like the serpentine stitch, but my first sewing machine that I had before these two, it would like perfectly. You didn't have to adjust the size and it was like that. These machines are like, oh, okay, adjust the width, the length, and it just took forever. So I have to really be committed to the time for it, but I had a Disney sewing machine and a quilt, um, embroidery machine combo and that thing was it was my favorite if you've been here for a while you've seen it, it had that plastic ramp that came down that you know you put your wrists on and stuff I love that machine I still get notifications from eBay when parts and stuff come up because I was thinking I was really determined at one point to just buy another one don't get me wrong I love my Juki if right now, you know, knock on all kinds of wood, if something, I don't need this here. If something happened, I would buy another one of these machines, no problem. I love this machine. But that Disney one that I really did a lot of my videos on, that was a great little machine. So I'm still gonna top stitch these. I just want to press them over since there's this really long piece one thing with these irons that are gray and dangerous, they don't shut off, so they're always hot. Like, I can touch down here and it burns my finger. I really appreciate you guys putting up with all these randomness that I have. We haven't done a lot of tutorials lately, but hopefully you've been enjoying just some of the randomness. I have the iron unboxing coming up next Friday. I don't know what I had in mind after that, but I have a couple of thoughts. And then we'll do the live stream on February 1st. And then after that, we're really going to play it by ear. I'm going to try to put up some random or some tutorials, or I don't really know what yet. So you'll have content. Sometimes on a Whip It Wednesday, you might just have a, an update from me with no projects to show. Because once the sewing machine goes up, I was thinking about pulling out some of my crochet, and while I'm talking, I can just crochet. Give you an update, give you something for your eyes to look at instead of just my face. 
course, I would definitely put it so you can see all my ugliness behind me, my messy room. I want a heavier duty sewing machine that has a knee lift. This one has a knee lift. This is the Juki HZL F600. It has a knee lift, but between this chair and the table, I haven't used it because I don't have the quite right. And you know what? It's just a force of habit to do. I'm okay lifting up all the time. It doesn't bother me. Although I am going to be... I haven't made quilt quilts in a long time, but I, I have like four of them in my head that have to, they have to be made this year. They just have to be. So there's one side, and then there's the other. So let me trim this off so we can have a little bit of a look-see. And then we'll just trim them down the size. We need to get our lining and then add the zipper and whatnot. Just add that to the mess. I'll clean that up afterwards while the kitty cats are eating. I think the, the knowledge of is getting close to the move and the fact that, you know, the house has at least been chosen. I feel a little bit better. So there, can we see them both? Oh, yeah, that video is a little slow. I'll take a drink while we're waiting. Yeah, I'm not sure I would really want to use the knee lift. Everyone's like, knee lift, Robin, knee lift. But I'm pretty good at sewing with my foot and just lifting up the presser foot on both machines. The problem I have is, you know, there's always just a little thing. But the Juki, the lifter for the, the foot pedal there, the up and down thing is on the back. And on the Brother 6000i or whatever I have, it's on the inside. So I'm constantly in the wrong spot, just out of habit. All right, so you can see both of those, so they need to be trimmed down now to size. I watch a lot of bag makers that don't talk, and I'm not even sure if their native language is English. I think they're in other countries and stuff because they have a lot of centimeters on it. They draw lines with pencil and stuff and cut things with scissors, and oh, I really do appreciate having the rulers and the rotary cutters. Now I'm gonna take this top line, I feel like that's my most important line for the zipper to square it off. I've trimmed all the excess around so I know I don't have like a bunch of fabric and no batting. You can do the same process with fusible fleece if you have scraps of those. So I'm just gonna slide it up and okay, this one's at an inch and a quarter and that covers up most of it and it's almost Surprisingly, it's almost parallel on the bottom. It just kind of has a little dip to the side. I have a little bit of fabric there. I want to get the pouch as big as I can for the size of scraps and stuff that I sewed on. Normally I wouldn't cut batting, but I flipped over my mat to the purple side, so I'll just clean the mat. It's not that big deal. It has a lot of batting stuck in it already. Now, I'm going to cut this one but I might have to recut it because once I cut the second one, I have to cut them to match, right? So here I kind of want to pick a number. So this one is nine and three eighths. That number doesn't bother me, but if it was nine and three eighths, nine and a half, and somewhere in between, I just want to pick a line. So I'm lining it up at the bottom and it's seven and a half here. So I can go up to seven and three quarters. Here you go. Here's your number. Seven and three quarters by nine and three eighths. There you go. That's a crazy number. But you know what? That's what this pouch is going to be. So there we go. Now for this one, I need to press this one. This one feels a little bit bubbly. So I still haven't pressed my lining or cut my lining. I'm just mad woman over here pressing with the iron. Now I can put this on like this, but I'm just going to see what I can do. I can already see that this piece kind of goes up. So I don't think I'll use that as my guideline. I'll let that be wonky and I'll use this side here. So that one was nine and three eighths by seven and three quarters. That one's too big. I'm gonna have to cut that one down because this one is 
I can get nine and three eighths, but it's only seven and a quarter. Which is fine. That's just something that happens. I don't always pay attention, and I think I'll just do this. Let me see. What's that at? Yeah, that's good. Nope, down a little. I don't pay attention particularly and say, oh, this one looks bigger. I'll cut that one first. I just cut one, and then I adjust. This time I'm lining it up on the bottom brown because that looks better. Which would you suggest? All my machines are brother, but I've been considering other machines. I have a Singer Starter sewing machine, but maybe by the end of the year I can get a new one. For what you're sewing and everything, I think you would probably be very happy with uh, the next style up versus the starter machine. I would just look at prices. I bought this brother. Now, half the people that have this brother machine that come here on this video say, I love it, and the other people dislike it. This brother, let me look at what it is. It is a CS 6000i. And I bought mine on sale for $150 on Amazon. It was $250 full price. It works great for me. I make quilts on it. It doesn't have a big throat plate. It has more room here on the Juki. So for quilting, I would use this one. I bought that one to do fabric postcards and jeans and note cards and just stuff that I can just... I don't have to worry about like messing with the timing on this one and making it go off or something. Plus I can keep the same needle and not change it in and out all the time. But I think that's a great machine. A lot of people love Bernina's. It's one of those things they say, if you're going to get an expensive machine that costs you $1,000, $800, $600, whatever it is, they say to go to a sewing machine store, a dealership or something, and try different ones out and see what feels right to you. I am a brother sewing machine. I'm going to do this nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter. That's my finished measurements. I'm a brother sewing machine through and through. I love them. The Juki is like a first cousin. They're like related. I find going from the Juki to the brother and back and forth, I feel like they're the same company, you know. They, they sew the same. They feel the same. They act the same. The feet are interchangeable because I've done that. I actually like the Juki foot better of some and the brother foot better on others, so I switch them back and forth. I'm sorry, I really don't know that machine. Nope, I, I can't picture that one at all. There's a few... It's like if you're going to make a lot of quilts, you want a bigger throat plate. If you're going to be making thick items. Now, I watched a Crafty Gemini about this specific Juki and the next model down. That's a little less expensive. And she sewed through stacks of jeans and stuff. So I'm like, yes, that's what I want. This sews through bags and bowl cozies and stuff really well. Nine and a quarter, seven and a quarter. Nine and a quarter, seven and a quarter. Nine and a quarter. I don't want to take off from the top. I want to take off on this side though. So I'm going to make nine and a quarter and take off from this light colored side. So you have to think about what machine you're going to make, or what you're going to make with your machine. And then I would look at YouTube videos. If you're making cloth diapers, look for tutorials about cloth diapers and see what kind of machine they're using. And you can even ask them, you know, how they like it for what they're making. And then test some out and always go by your price range and stuff like that. And then that, that, that's really anyone who asks, and I see different people asking about machines and stuff, they're always like, it's really a good idea to try them out, to go by what you're going to make and what your budget is. I find it's better to buy just a little outside your knowledge level. Like this machine, when it was purchased for me, this is a gift. One of you guys' amazing people sent this to me after my first brother's sewing machine died. And this was more than I needed for a sewing machine. So I've been growing into this. Nine and a quarter and seven and a quarter. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm going to need that when I go to cut my lining. 
So I grew into this machine, so I didn't grow out of it right away. That's like buying a bicycle that fits you perfectly when you're seven years old. You kind of want to grow into it a little bit. You want your shoes to be a little bit bigger when you're a kid and stuff like that. I feel the same way with the machine so that you grow into it a little bit. Unless you've already all grown up with your crafting. And then you can just go ahead and, um, you know, get whatever works for you. But sometimes we have to get something less because of our budget. But the middle models and lower models, if you do spend the time, while you're saving your money to get it and you're working towards it and you're thinking later in the year, then I say start doing your research now. Oh, see, this is the kind of salvage I'm collecting now. I have enough salvage to make my quilts that I want. And now I'm collecting salvage that has weird things on it. I don't even know what these are. Oh, silly. They're upside down. They're birds. So this is the kind of salvage I'm collecting now for another quilt. I haven't started the first one, and I'm already collecting salvages for another one. All right. Let's see if I can get both pouches out of this. Uh, yes, I can. So let's iron this. I'm going to have to spritz this one with water since I don't have a steam iron going. Mom has an old Kenmore I will inherit when she passes. Uh, Brother SE 600, which is an embroidery sewing machine. I love it. I learned on a singer, bought my first alcohol in 79. Is that my brother? Yeah, it's like, I think there's like people, when you buy like a car, if you're like a Toyota family or a Ford family, everyone seems to like stick with the same. Oh, here's, nope, that's not the one I want. Looking for my spray bottle. Come on, bring my leash. It seems like when people are Juki sewing machine people, they stick with Jukis. If they're Bernitas, they stick with Bernitas. And I find, I mean, I started on a Singer, and then I got the Disney Brother sewing machine as a scratch and dent at Walmart. The box was damaged, but the styrofoam inside was still safe, so the machine itself was still safe. So I grabbed that at a really good bargain price. Put that somewhere. So you can do your research now while you're waiting. That way you don't feel like rushed, like I have the money, I want it, I'm ready, I'll just buy whatever. So it gives yourself a little time to do a little research and look around. I've heard those old Kenmores, a lot of the quilters will grab those because they said they're great for, they're good workhorses. The Kenmores are supposed to be really good workhorses and they do a nice straight stitch and the bag makers use them. Now, the bag makers that do the vinyl and all of that, they're like crazy people. They got like this free arm and they get the industrials. And you know what I decided? I, I felt, I feel when everyone else is doing something, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the in crowd and do what everyone else is doing. But I've learned over the years that it usually steers me astray. I'm, I like quilted cotton. I like batting. I like making mini quilts bed size quilts, zipper pouches. I don't need to go ahead and do the fancy fun vinyl with the Pokemon designs on it like everyone else does. If I want one, I will support another shop and pick one up. For myself, I will just still make these. This is what I enjoy and this is what works for me. I would, I would search, I would just Google a sewing machine that handles thick layers. See what comes up. That's what I did. I circled the best sewing machine for quilting, the best domestic sewing machine for quilting, you know, at home for domestic sewing, whatever. I try a whole bunch of different phrases. I see what came up. I watched the different videos. I narrowed it down. I did more research because I, I wanted to make sure if someone was going to gift me the sewing machine, and they gave me, I gave them a low cost machine, a mid cost machine, and an expensive machine and let them choose based on their budget. And if they were going to spend money on something like this, I wanted to make sure I did my research and got what was going to work for me. So I, I really highly recommend, I did the, oh, I want it now thing many times. And just having the research, I always find it works out better for me now. All right. Seven and a quarter. I think I'll just cut one by one. It's just easier. 
yeah, the research, then you know you won't have buyer's remorse because you'll have already searched. You know when you're narrowing it down, if you're saving for it or if you're budgeting or whatever you might be doing, you'll know, okay, this is a price range that I'm comfortable with. These are the machines in that price range. And the whole buyer's regret, buyer's remorse, it can hit hard, right? Nine and a quarter, do I want to, eh, I'm not going to worry about the scrap. So you've done your research, you, you've you saved your money, you watched your budget, you did what you needed to. And for me, I don't get the buyer's remorse that way. So it works out pretty good. Okay, this one, I don't know why everything looks like this to me, concave. So I'll just cut this one. The lining, you can kind of have a little oopsie. If it's sometimes if my fabric is a little smaller, I'll still use it because when you're in the lining, it's going to be in the seam allowance and stuff, right? So you don't have to worry if something is a little shorter. It's going to, like the bottom, if you need it to be seven and a quarter and you only have it seven inches, then it, it's just going to be in the seam allowance anyway. So your lining is not as deep. Oh, there's a bubble in my mat. That's what it is. The mat or the ruler or something's bubbling up, which is making it look weird. All right, it's not my eyes. Loved my brother until I sewed on my metal frame singer. I loved a brother like yours, keeping it for the girls to use. I have two good singers and a Janome heavy duty. All have metal frames. Yeah, the metal frames. That's what I was looking at. Something heavy and not plastic. This Juki, to move it around, it's the, the brother sewing machine moves when I sew. I just touch it and it slides across the table. The Juki, I have to pay attention. I have to pick it up and move it. It slides on this mat, of course, but I really have to nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Pay attention when I'm lifting it because it's, it's a heavy machine. And that's one of the things I wanted too, so that it would actually last. This is why I don't put a lot of cutting and trimming in my videos because it takes a minute for my eyes to zone in and to make sure that I'm getting the cut correctly and stuff. So what is, again, with a zipper pouch or a lining and stuff, it doesn't really matter. But when I'm doing quilt blocks and stuff, I need to really take a second, adjust, readjust, line up here, line up there. That makes for boring TV, right? Okay, so make sure that these two match. Good. These two match. Good. And these match. Some people like to put a stabilizer type thing on there. Why am I stuck on those words? I hate words. Oh, it's 4.30. Bear with me for a second. So sometimes I get stuck and I can't remember... I'm stuck on Insulbright because I couldn't think of that word and now I can't not think of that word. That's the only one I could think of. So yeah, some people put it on there if they want their pouch a little stiff, but I really like that quilted feeling, the softness and stuff like that. I like the way it is. I think you should try a Juki straight stitch or the Brother 1500. I so love mine, but I mainly do quilts, but also really nice. Yeah, the straight stitch for bags is supposed to be so good. If you're in any of the Facebook groups, if you ask any of them, you'll get a hundred people telling you about a hundred different machines that you can look at and narrow down. If you make certain things, like if you're a quilter or a bag maker, you go into those groups, if that's the main thing you make. And they really, everyone's really helpful. People love to tell you what sewing machine they use. Okay, so these are the tops. I need a label. Where am I gonna put my label? Label, label. I think Jody would like one of these. I haven't used one of these with the hearts on it before. I think I'm gonna put a label right on the front of this bag. You watch me. I should put it on the liner. That would be the nice thing to do, huh? I think I'll do that. That's a big label. Okay. So here is this, here is this. These are the labels from Ever Emblem. 
they're the ones that I want to have the word smile sticking up because I think she'll like that. They're the ones that have the heat and bond on the back, the heat and bond light. Yeah, but if you're like mainly, you know, 75% a quilter and 25% a bag maker, or you mainly do clothing or something like that, it, it'll, if you're looking for something that'll handle thick layers. So I would look in the bag making groups because they do a lot of thick layers. Quilters, you know how the layers are. They're not like super thick. Okay, so in my other bags, I like measured an inch down and this over and stuff like that. I know Jody won't be mad at me if I'm not perfectly even. So I'm just going to put it. I think I'll put it right here. So when you're making something for a friend, it's okay. And you can look in seven different groups. You can look in cloth diapers. You can look in, I'm sure there's a group for the, uh, I think you said you make menstrual uh, underwear, menstrual panties and stuff. You can look in, there's gotta be a Facebook group for that. There's a Facebook group for, like I said, everything. All right, so I need to stitch around this before I put everything together. And I just do a straight stitch because it's okay. I do close to the edge, drop it down to a 2.0. The heat and bond's gonna hold it on and this is not gonna get washed that much. It might get wet at the pool, but I just eyeball it. The open-toed foot works really great for putting a label on, but I've gotten pretty good. Again, just lean in. Make an ugly face. Cross your eyes. Strangest thing, I've never stuck my tongue out while working all my life, and then lately all of a sudden I've started sticking my tongue out while making certain projects. I'm like, you are crazy, Robin. I bought my Janome for repairing my dad's jeans and sweats. Works great for bags. Also, there you go. You can look at whatever Jackie has, because if Jackie's making jeans and bags, that's thick layers and heavy duty. I say if you can make jeans on something, that's, that's, that's good. I know I can do jeans on this. I just, I get a little nervous sometimes. I wouldn't make jeans. I'm really, ha I have, I've made pants. I, I've made dresses and things for little kids and and pants with the elastic and the drawstring, but jeans, uh, you know what? I'll just buy a pair of jeans. I'm good. So here's this. I need some of these. Here's my lining. Smile up. So I'll put that in. Oh, I need a zipper, Robin. And you moved it out of the way. There we go. All right, zipper. Teeth face down on the front of my pouch, zipper to the left. I believe Jody's right-handed, and if not, she's already... A left-handed person is already used to having to do things differently. Sorry, Jody, if you're left-handed, but we're doing it this way. Really, you can flip it around. There's nothing here that makes it look like a front and back. There's not like a main design on it, so it can really be flipped either way. I just wanted to have my tag when you open it so you look in and you see my tag. Then I'll put my back, uh, my lining right sides down, line it up exactly at the top with the zipper and on the right sides. I do the left side and then the right side and then the center. When I do the matchstick quilting, I'll have stitched across the top. I should have done it here. So I'm just going to be careful to make sure I get the batting and the quilted bag part in there. Some people like to sew the zipper down and then they sew the lining to the zipper type situation. I've been doing it this way, so I just kind of do it this way. Again, 
it's one of those things. However you started doing, I should check to make sure my phone's not going to die. Oh, I don't know how without touching things, I'm afraid. All right, well, we'll wing it. If I disappear, it means my phone died, right? I don't have, I had a plug on that wall, and yes, the plug is still there, but I don't have the accessibility to it the way I did. I need a zipper foot. Here's my zipper foot. All right, put this foot where you're not going to lose it or accidentally throw it away. It doesn't fit back in there easily. I'm using the left side of the zipper, and I sew. I've never heard a bad word about, no. I haven't heard a bad word about any Janome, Bernina, brother. Well, not everyone likes brother. They feel like it's a, not lowbrow, but it's it's down below machine. You know, like brothers aren't professional. You have to have a Bernina or a Juki or a Janome, but I like brothers. And then I have a little mark on my foot that I follow. I don't have the wide zipper tape, a num I think this is a number three, number five, I don't know. I just buy them from Zip It, so I, I don't go right up against the teeth. And I like to push my finger down to hold everything in place firmly. For me, I found that was the game changer, especially since the batting is not sewn down. If my batting gets a little wonky, I'm all right. I don't mind. In the past, I would take this and I would press this and I would go ahead and top stitch. And now I just kind of get it out of the way and I put the other side on. A little finger press. So this is my bottom, the light on the top. I line this up with the outer piece, right sides together. We all know if we don't that this, this quilting clips here have a flat spot so you want the colored side to be facing up so when it goes through your sewing machine, but let's be realistic. Come on, how many people figure Ma Rob Robin? I almost called myself Mama. I'm thinking about the cats. How many people know that Robin just doesn't always pay attention to that? I try to flip it. Sometimes I put them in all upside down. And I found that I don't like the clear ones. I like the color. That sometimes I try to put all the colors on and I don't let the same two colors touch just because I'm weird. But it, it all works. It's fine. Oh, the yeah, I love the Yahoo groups. Yeah, I haven't heard anything bad about Juki. The only thing I hear is I'm a Bernina person, so I love my Bernina. I would never buy a Juki, or I would never buy a Janome, only because they love Bernina, not because there's anything bad. So the lining side is right sides together. Again, lining it up at the top right corner and the top left corner, and it I don't worry about at the bottom because it's going to be a little bit off. And then I ease in along the top. The quilt as you go in is here takes forever. It's taken us, well, two hours worth of chatting is not bad. A pouch like this usually takes me about an hour to make. And then, again, the same thing with the zipper. I try to stay even. I, I do a lot of backstitching at the top, even though I'm on the zipper tape, just to keep the craziness of the thread. The thread just... Thread management drives me crazy because you get pieces of thread that stick out in the wrong places. And right now you can't see it because it's on the inside. But when I do the top stitching along the zipper, that's noticeable. I've never made a zipper pouch without steam though, so this is going to be interesting. A lot of things were cheaper. Now this machine has dropped in price since I got it, but... I don't know. Um, I got this before Rob passed away. So maybe 2018, 2017. Because I know he was alive when I got this and he wasn't sick. So it had to have been prior to 2019. 
So the zipper is nylon. You don't want to press on it for very long. With this iron, I don't want to press on it at all. With my other irons, I press on it no problem. So I'm pulling on one side just to get this kind of pressed down. And the same thing with my batting. Now I'm on the back side. I'm only worrying about burning my fingers. And I want this to be smoothed out. Now with the cotton batting, I can just let it stick. Sometimes you have to move it and tell it, hey, this is what we're doing. There we go. And now I'm going to top stitch. I was buying my daughter a machine to see if she would like quilting. Did a question on a quilt form and everyone that had the cheap brothers did not have anything bad to say. But yeah, see, the only thing I could say, like, like my brother's sewing machine, you don't, the only big thing is it doesn't have a big throw plate. Now, my original Disney one didn't either, and I made a, I quilted a king-size quilt on it. So it's really, you know, what can you handle? What can you do? How patient are you? You can always do quilt as you go. But she's looking, I know she's looking for, is it, is it Coffee Alley, right? Yeah, Coffee Alley is looking for thicker things. But just for anyone else who might be listening, I'm just smoothing this out. Sometimes I put clips on the end to hold it. Now... For me, everyone's different. There's all tricks for everyone. I found out that if I want nice, straight-ish, smooth top stitching, I have to start stitching and don't stop. So I have to go through and I try my best just to keep on going. I found if I stop to readjust my hands, I get funky stuff all the time. Now this is where I don't, on my lining whatever thread I'm using is going to show up because that's the bobbin so I like to bring my thread up here to make sure they're both at the top so any bird's nest won't be vis visible all right we ready here we go so I can just walk my hands as I'm going so I don't have to adjust them I have all that batting and the extra layers, so it's making that noise. And then I come around to this side, I just lift up the foot. Just wish they had one that would handle heavier stuff. The brothers, yeah, I don't, the brothers don't have an industrial, do they? I don't think they do. I haven't heard one, they may. I never thought I would be a two sewing machine person. I always laughed at everyone that had different sewing machines for different things, but as you get going, that really ends up being it because sometimes the one machine can't do everything for you. So I trim the threads, cut the threads here. Oh, I supposed to, I have to box the corners. I totally forgot we we're gonna do that. Okay. I haven't boxed corners on a zipper pouch in forever. So if I box these, I'll be putting these together and these together. Okay, where's my measure? Where's my measuring? Not my measuring. Where's my little ruler? Oh, don't break the rulers, Robin Suzanne. I usually keep all of these rulers and stuff right on my table, but when you guys are here, I have to make room. So I have a little two and a half inch square. It came from a package of OmniGrid stuff that I absolutely loved that pack. But when I first started using the rulers, they were great. Now they're not my favorite, but I love this two and a half inch square. So I have, pen doesn't matter. I'm just going to draw a one inch square on all of these. And that'll give her a two inch wide bottom. Coffee Alley, I, I, I'm sorry, I call you Coffee Alley. Do you want to be Alley or it does not matter? But once we're in Arizona, I think Bowl Cozies is going to be one of the first tutorials. I do not like the thickness of the Bowl Cozies. I learned that I have now have permission from someone else. I don't care if they're a professional sewer or just an everyday sewer like us that I now have permission to do something. So we're gonna do bowl cozies and we're gonna fix that thickness because that is the worst part about making a bowl cozy. And then we're gonna, sick, we're gonna fix some of the problems that I find with using a bowl cozy. 
because those irritate me. I love the bowl cozies. I use mine. There'll be some months that I use it almost every day. I love rice bowls, so I make rice and then I add vegetables to it or I add a protein or just beans or something. I like getting a bag of frozen stir-fry vegetables and just adding it to a bowl of rice. And the bowl cozy helps to keep my bowl of food warm. We just did something nice for someone. They liked what we did for a video. Okay, so here's my other pieces. So I'm gonna cut an inch, whatever I did on the lining, I'm gonna do here. I wanna make some more of these two that aren't just flat bowl, uh, zipper pouches. It's just easier to make them flat, right? So I don't have to think about any of these corners and stuff. Sometimes my brain just stops working and I have to watch one of my uh, my own videos to figure out how to do something. All right, well, I'll probably keep calling you Coffee Alley. I just kind of think it's, it's, it's a cute name. It's really nice, I like it. Not that you need my permission to have a name, but you know, I like it. I'm getting my good scissors. Did I put my good scissors away? Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the good Kai scissors. Nope, that's not it. Hold on. I tell you, I say my name. When I'm in trouble, I call myself Ro Oh, I didn't put them away. That's why. I call myself Robin Suzanne all the time, you know, because it's my middle name. But I, I've been in so much trouble lately with myself. All right, I'm going to cut these. Yeah, I think the bowl cozies are going to be really fun. We all know how to make them. We've all made dozens of them. They are usually really popular with gifts. So we're gonna make some more. I That's why I bought, when I saw that batting on sale, it was like a lightning sale or something on Amazon. Sometimes Amazon just does 24 hour sales and they know I'm a sucker because they send me a message on my phone, a notification, hey Robin, we saw you thought about these over on Facebook or we saw you like something on Instagram so we're gonna try to sell it to you here on Amazon. And most of the time I'm like, no thank you. And other times I'm like, oh yeah. I recently had to buy some stuff for the trip. One of the things I've been eyeballing that I found out from some YouTube people, it's like a weapon, I love this thing. This is a tripod and it's got a remote so I can stand in front of it and start it and everything. Hi, Lorlin, we're just having fun. So I picked up a new tripod, but look at it. It's like a, it's like a laser or a weapon or something. And it's really lightweight so that I can hold it and like when I do the video here at the house before I leave, this is what this house looks like. And when I video the other house, so I'm not carrying just my phone and having, cause sometimes I get the shakes and sometimes I'm really good. So we'll have that. And that way it's a really nice one. And it has it so it goes over it and it goes straight down. The tripod I'm using right now kind of does it, but this one also telescopes out. So it's a really good one. And Amazon said, hey, it's on sale. And I'm like, oh, that's a good sale. I think it was like 45% off. I said, yes, please, I will take one. So Amazon knows I'm a good customer. They're also really sweet. So they know I need help. They're like, hey, Robin, I think you're going to be running out of cat food soon. You should go ahead and order some cat food. And I'll be like, no, Amazon, I'm sorry. I bought two bags last time. I'm good. Or thank you for the reminder. I'd like to go ahead and pick some up, please. My kids laugh at me, but I have Amazon Prime, so it's free delivery. And yeah, I can get it the next day. And a lot of times I, I am willing to shop local. I will shop online at other stores. I'll shop local. But if Amazon is going to get it to me in two days or three days and it's less expensive or the same price, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm supporting Amazon even though so many people don't like them. I can't help it. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. The one you have, Jackie, or one of these? I watch her on and off. I watch a lot of people on and off. I'll admit, sometimes a video that they're doing 
I'm, I'm thinking. Doesn't always interest me. Sometimes I'll let it play just for fun so they get the views and all of that. And sometimes it's like... There's only so much time in the day, right? I don't always want to watch a tutorial. So I open up the zipper pouch so it doesn't, you know, I don't want to sew my zipper off, right? So I have to open it. And I'm just thinking, okay, this, I know how to do a tote bag, so I know how to do this. Sometimes, like I said, my brain just gets a little bit confused. So we'll put some clips in. Put a clip there. I like to line up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. I always try to show you these things. So right here, I like to line up this bit, this part here, and this part here. So I'll take these two and I put the zipper to the lining. Some people do it the other way and then I peek just to make sure they're lined up. Some people prefer to do the zipper the other way. There's all kinds of things you can do. It really comes down to what you want for a look and your personal preference. So I like to put a clip on one side and put a clip on the other and then I can just keep clipping. I clip these little cutout notches. This side's a lot easier because there's no zipper tab pull zip closed up part there. You know what I mean. So just pop that in. Laura Little chat sewing machines with you. Coffee Alley's looking for a little bit of a heavier duty. I think Laura Lynn has Janome. Little, she calls it Nomi. So she has some Janomis. Amazon's a friend. Yeah, Amazon's my best friend. When I leave and I go to the store, I'm wasting time. It's harder on my body. It takes up a lot of energy. And let's face it, it's bad for the budget because there's always something else I see that I want to get. I have to be really careful because I, I don't need to just buy things to buy things, you know, just because they're there and they're cute and it's a great fabric or there's a food item or something. It's just cheaper to do it. So Laura Lynn, do you have something that will go through a lot of thick layers that's really good for, let's just say, uh, vinyl bags? Thick layers of denim. She's looking for something that's strong enough to go through a lot of layers and stitch well. She's also having a problem with skip stitches, and she tried the several different threads, cotton and polyester, a new needle, changed out the bobbin, and the stitches are still skipping. So if you have any input, I'm sure she would appreciate the help. So what I'm going to do now is look at the cat. I'm going to be stitching all the way around. I'm going to leave the opening in the bottom, so I'm going to leave a couple inches on each side of the clipped out corners, just enough so it's easy to reach my hand in. I'm going to stitch straight down, and when I get to this corner that I've already cut out, I'm just going to pull it through my machine and then stitch, and there'll be a thread in each of these corners, and then I'll sew my corners. Oh, the Horizon. Yeah, the Horizon, I've heard good news. That's another one that's a good one. I like to look at this when I'm stitching. I have a, oh, I guess switch back. I have a, what they call a hump jumper or a jean sting, or you can put some cardboard or folded fabric underneath because you want it to always be level. So I just try to pay attention because I know sewing one way I don't like to sew even and then drop down to my lining. So I make sure that when I stitch, I go lining to my batting. And then when I come back around, I'm up high and I drop down. So it's usually easier for me to keep everything going well. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance because I love it. I like to drop my stitch length down to a narrow one. I do leave a smidge extra. I do more of a half an inch on the lining because I don't want it to be baggy in the bottom. Some people don't cut out the corners until after they sew. Again, personal preference. This works for me. I like it. Then I just leave my needle down. I can lift up the presser foot, spin the bag around, and realign to do this section. Now, again, I do a larger seam allowance for 
two thirds of the lining and when I get an, a couple inches from the top, I go back and that keeps it from being baggy. No one likes a baggy lining, you know? When I go over the zippers, yes, I go over it twice. I don't back stitch here because it'll be fine when I stitch my gussety thing there. Is it always a gusset on the bottom? Jackie, help me. When you have the two corners, is it considered a gusset on the bottom or is it only a gusset when you put a whole side panel around versus boxing the corners? When I box the corners, does it create a gusseted bottom? Anyone can answer. You need to have like a quilting game show. Oh, just a quick little input, Craft Coffee Alley. There's a lady that's Crafty Alley. I follow her for years now. She's a, a knitting person. But Coffee Alley, if you've already created a project and you need to fix it, there are ways to fix skip stitches without stitching over it again. You can check for videos on that. I found that very useful, too. It's mostly for people who are sewing with leather and vinyl, but I'll take my knowledge anywhere I get it. So now, if I had... Oh, here it is. It's a Gina ma, Gina ma jig. A Gina ma jig. I got this at a thrift store. Brand new in the package. It was so old, the package was yellow and everything. So when you put this underneath, your needle goes in this little slot and it keeps your presser foot level because you don't want your presser foot going like this. So when you put this on and you're going from thick to thin or thin to thick, it keeps your presser foot, I go slow. I'm going through a vinyl needle so I can sew over the teeth. So when the back end gets passed, and I can slide this along with it, once the back end of my presser foot drops, I can take this out, and I didn't have any weird skip stitches here. It didn't go and scream at me or do anything weird. Again, increased my seam allowance a little bit, and I need to remember to leave an opening. Some people put pins sideways. They mark it on the fabric. I did all of those things in the beginning. As I needed to. Alrighty, so now we want to sew these. I just clipped the threads in there. We want to line up. Some people take this over and they press these open. I just leave it like that. I want to open it up so I'm looking at the fabric. I'm only doing an inch so it's a little harder. I want one seam going one way, one going the other. They always want to do that. And I want to line it up so that this seam on the bottom and this seam is continuous all the way around. Oh, that's very frustrating. So you should ask at any time, even if it feels like crazy for you, I can nest my seams several inches back so that I can hopefully feel that it's there. For these little pouches, I really don't fuss too much about it if it works it works if it doesn't oh, it's all right Jody's gonna love me anyway and if not she'll sneak up she'll find my house you know Jody Jody's gonna be able to find me in Arizona even if I don't give her my address I just know her she feels like me like a very stalker woman like when she gets her mindset on it Jody if you're watching the replay we're talking about you I feel like she could find me if she wanted to Oh, it's probably due to be serviced anyways, isn't it? I'm hoping for a good, I'm doing the same thing on the lining. I'm hoping for a really good service shop because we, we only have one here, one in the entire county. And I tell you, I just don't like that guy. He takes forever. And no matter what machine you bring in, he wants you to sell it, or sell it to him. He told me to take my Disney machine and throw it away because it wasn't worth anything. So I just took it home and fixed it myself. Forget him. But he always wants to sell to an upgrade. He's always, like, pushing. And it's not like he's just saying, hey, you know, if 
you know, you're ready for an upgrade. I have this great machine. Let me show you what it does. No, he says yours. He told me mine's a piece of shit and I should throw it in the trash. And that if I were a real quilter, I would be sewing on a Janomia, Bernina or whatever. And I'm like, you know what, dude, I am never coming back here. I never coming back here. He kept my machine for three weeks and told me he couldn't fix it. Charged me $150 and he was just a jerk. She's bringing, well, Sue, Sue, oh, Sue, that's it. You know what that means, Sue, right? P.O. box for you. Y'all know, I'm not, telling, I'm not telling anyone. All right, we've been on here for two hours and 10 minutes. So hopefully the people that I'm thinking about that would come to my house that, you know, I just, yeah, yeah. I'm going to double stitch over. This is the lining, so I'm only stitching it once. The way I feel is just because your family, you're related, your blood, whatever, that doesn't mean, get out of here, not my cat. It doesn't mean you automatically get to be part of my life. You know, I... I, I, even with friends, I like to give friends a benefit of the doubt, but if friends become hurtful, just because you've known someone for 20 years doesn't mean they have to be part of your life, right? So I don't feel like I should, I do not feel obligated to tell anyone. Now this is the outer bag, and for stress points and everything, I'm going to stitch this twice, back stitching on the seams, just to make sure it's nice and secure. I'll be in a big metropolitan area. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking because um, Phoenix isn't very far away. I haven't, without having the address, I haven't started looking yet. But I just, I, we had so many problems with family. Sometimes I just want to be a little anonymity, anonymity, you know. I want to be a hermit. Anonymity. There it is. I just kind of want to. I don't want. I. I don't feel obligated just because your family to allow you to take over my life and to to drive the bus, so to speak. So yeah. Plus, I have to hide from Jody. Let's face it. I have to hide from Jody, so I can't give my address. I have to hide from Jody. Dinner's ready. Looking for now. Enjoy your dinner. Oh, I sewed that one twice. Cool. So if you want to see more things, you can go ahead and do a search for the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. Laura Lynn has been making videos, I believe, longer than I have. Pretty sure. I think I have more videos, but she's been doing videos longer. Only because I went a little crazy there for a while. I think it's been a little hit and miss too in the quilting community here on YouTube. I think for a while YouTube stopped suggesting us. And I think they were like suggesting other channels more. Not things like Missouri Star, Fat Quarter, Shabby Fabrics. Excuse me, there's certain channels that are just popular. But I think some of the medium to the smaller ones kind of gotten forgot for a little bit. I think I've been making videos for six or seven years. I've had my Patreon page for five years. So it has to be more than that. So I'm thinking about seven years. You can go to a YouTuber's homepage and when you click on the videos, you can sort them by popular, by newest, popular and oldest so if you want to see someone's very original video you can go back and check out their oldest and then just watch them lee allen has been watching both of us for a while yeah i'd have to double check but i'm, I'm pretty sure it's i'd say seven years we may be about the same or pretty close i'm not sure okay laura lynn and her family made a big move a couple years ago too they went across canada 
Now I'm going to cut off the zippers. I'm going to use my Kai scissors. Boom, 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 boom. See, look at that. Like butter right through the teeth and everything, the folded teeth. I know there's a tutorial for these. I had them saved in one of my numerous lists, but my watch later playlist is like 2,000 videos long. When I'm doing zipper pouches, I normally trim some of the seam allowance, but I don't know, I don't really think I will trim much on this one, just because boxed bottoms, I don't usually do it for some reason. Just trim a little. I don't have that much of a seam allowance. So what's everyone eating for dinner? We know Laura Lynn is just lurking for dinner. On live stream days, I really do something simple. I actually purchased uh, vegan corn dogs because if you guys don't know, if some of you are new or just haven't heard, I'm allergic to milk and soybean products and stuff. So a lot of times, everything has soybean oil or milk in it. So I've been eating vegan hot dogs. I'm a flexitarian. I eat a combination, mostly vegetarian, but I do eat meat occasionally. I like chicken. I like chicken, but I have a lot of food allergies. So I'm going to have corn dogs and french fries in the air fryer. So hand goes in. The zipper is open to here, but if you left your zipper too closed, what you can do is put your hand in. Take this hand and feel for the zipper and grab the zipper and just kind of, you know, push and pull just to make sure you got enough opening. Your third year, yeah, Dewey's been around here for a while. Pizza, oh, I made two pizzas last night. One for the fridge and one for the freezer. So that, I mean, if you're going to go through all the effort of making pizza, I'm only going to do it once, right? So I come in and I just find the boxed bottoms down there. And by doing the two rows of stitching, you could possibly see that there's no stitches popping through there, which is really nice. Now this one has stitches, but it's from here, not from the seam. And I pull some threads out. And then, as you guys know, I don't do zipper tape. You didn't watch YouTube, so we're like some of the originals. Mm. So this one, I don't know what it is. My zippers, it's probably something that just happens. It's not perfectly lined up, but it doesn't matter. It's going to go on the inside. Here, I close it up a little bit. I put my thumb where the zipper is, and I do the finger thing here, and I push, pull. And you don't push hard, but I bring that zipper up just a little bit so I don't have that dented area there. So I take this and I'm going to give it a little bit of a press so that I have a nice pretty seam, a uh, fold, whatever, and I will just top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge so I don't have a big lump down there. Some people like to ladder stitch it, whip stitch it. I like to machine stitch it because no matter how much I practice it, meeting the ladder stitches is not good. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate it. Amy has a channel also. I'm pretty sure it's Amy Dement. Is that how your last name is said? You can go right to her channel. And she, oh, guys, she's doing the flying geese quilt right now. She has all kinds of fun stuff. I found her through the Missouri Star, um, the Advent. I started watching her there. If you enjoy my show, my channel here, just for personality-wise, you should love watching Amy's also. I say go and take take a, take a uh, spin, you know, try a channel. I would never, okay, now sometimes I should say never. Sometimes I'll watch a video and I'll be like, oh, me and her, me and him, me and them, we don't jive. This is not the channel for me. Other times I'm like, um, maybe I just didn't like the material they were talking about, the subject or the project. So watch them a few times. Come back. You can subscribe to a channel and unsubscribe. I mean, we don't always notice, but we do. And yeah, it does hurt our feelings a little bit, but I get it. But I'd rather subscribe, try a few videos, see how it is. Because sometimes, you know, people have an off day. I can't get this under my sewing machine flip it the other way. Sometimes you have an off day or it's a subject that you're not really thrilled with. So give them another try. Come on back. You're welcome. 
Um, one of the first three I found for Zoe. You know, sometimes I find people and I'm like, that's it. I, I am theirs forever. And you have to remember, too, that if you don't watch videos, even though you're subscribed, sometimes YouTube will do a mass unsubscribing and they'll unsubscribe people. Or if you don't watch it, YouTube will stop putting it on your homepage. So when that happens, there's times where I've watched everything on YouTube. That's it. It's the end. It's not, of course, there's millions of videos going up every day, but when I get to the end of my subscribe list, I'll go down and on the side where it shows everyone I'm subscribed to, I'll look at the names and maybe I haven't seen, I thought I missed some of Amy's videos, so I pulled up her channel and I looked and I'm like, nope, I'm all caught up. I like every video I watch. Doesn't matter if I like it or not. I like every video I watch. So when I come back and if the video has been liked, I know I watched it. And if it hasn't, then I know I missed it, so I watch it. But sometimes you just, they're not all there on your homepage, and I miss people, and I forget, and I'm like, oh. Because even a big company, I haven't seen a Missouri Star video come across my feed in a while, and I know. Do I do embroidery? I do hand embroidery. I actually have a playlist of them. And in Arizona, we're going to get back to it. With these live streams, we'll do a whole big update, but you guys, I never really keep too many secrets from you. We're going to be doing a quilt along, I told you, in 2024 during our live streams. And I think we'll do that on the first Friday of the month. And on our next live stream, I thought we would start doing something fun, like hand embroidery, just sitting down and chatting. We'll do some bead work. You know, well, I have these kits to do some type of dyeing and stuff like that. I can't completely finish this with you guys because I packed all my stuff into the, well, it's all in the kitchen. I usually put a little tassel on and everything, but it needs a good press. It needs its tassels. Speaking of embroidery, you could put like a little thing in there, peace, love, Jody. There's just, here's where I was talking where you want to try to get this seam to match up there. And for the most part, it's okay. Now, it's really goofy because I didn't use the same width here as I did there. But I know Jody is not going to have an issue with that. So I think that came out really great. I think it's one of the triple plays because it came across on my homepage where you just go to YouTube home and it shows you, hey, here's some more quilting things. So I saw it on there and I'm like, I think that's the one I wanted to watch. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think I've just seen so many that I'm waiting for it and it's just not there yet. And is it, it's Misty or Missy? One of those, she does the things from home and stuff. I don't know if it's really from home. But so there's that. I have a nice beigey, gray, tanny zipper for her. So I really think she's going to love it. She loves very earth tone, autumnal type things. So you can see where the zipper is not, it's, it's nice. It's, I didn't do anything fancy. I just stuck my thumb in there and pulled it up some. This side always is a little scrunched. And I wasn't paying 100% attention. And it needs a good press. But it's not too loosey-goosey in there. And there's my new tag that I haven't used yet. She'll get a kick out of that. So I think that's really good. So this, guys, coming up, we should still be live on uh, February 1st. My birthday's on the 7th. I don't know what we're going to do. That's a Wednesday, so we'll see what happens. We're going to play it by ear as time goes. I probably won't tell you guys specifically that we've left Florida but you might figure it out, and I might tell you anyways. We'll see. I'm just going to play that by ear and see how I feel. Sometimes I'm just too excited and happy, and I have to tell you because you're my bestie friends. Thank you so much, Amy. I love this scraps. This is it. These are actually not even my scraps. These are someone else's that shared them with me because some of my viewers have just had enough of their scraps, and they know I love to play with them. And they're like me. They love to see me play with their scraps. And if I were to send you scraps, I'd be really excited to see you play with my scraps. But not blue, if I'm correct. You're the one that has the blue scrap bin that's really, really full. I think there's three people I watch on YouTube that have overflowing blue scrap bins. It's crazy. 
Right now I'm in Southwest Florida. I live in Cape Coral. We are just south of Tampa by a couple hours outside. I always say we're between Naples and Tampa. And we are moving uh, to Surprise, Arizona for my daughter for uh, advancement of work. She's gonna have her own Mission Barbecue store. She's gonna be the general manager. But that won't be until later this year. But we're gonna move soon, like sometime in February and now possibly early March, because you know how it is. It is misty, okay. Yeah, I liked I liked the three for ones. Yeah. Yeah, blue. You have a lot of blue. I have a lot of blue too. I don't know what it is. I think people just use a lot of blue. But coming up after the move, well, let's see. Prior to the move, I have some videos going. I'll do the little tour of the house here. I already have the one of the yard. And as I'm traveling, I will take pictures and do videos, but you won't see them until I'm secret between you and I will whisper so nobody in the world knows. When you start seeing videos of us traveling from Florida to Arizona, you'll know we're in Arizona. That'll be your tip. I really don't think I want to be able to hide from everyone, so it is what it is. I'm just not going to put it right out there and announce it. But I will take videos and pictures of our travels, even if it's like, this is the gas station in Florida. This is a gas station in Texas. Anything that we might happen to see, I'll take some pictures of and I'll put it into a video. I was going to go live, but it'd be live for like two minutes and then we'd have to get back in the car and go. So I'll do that. And I'll just have some random videos until I get something unpacked in Arizona. As soon as I get the machines and some stuff unpacked, even if it's just my Barney bag of scraps, we'll start doing videos again. But I have a list of all kinds of things that we're going to be working on this year. I'm so excited. We're going to do the quilt along. So we're going to work on a quilt from choosing the fabric, reading the pad pattern, cutting it out. We'll talk about quilting and basting and binding. And we're going to see it all the way through. I'm hoping so because I, well, after doing the allergy shots, most of my allergies are good, but my asthma is bad here with the, um, it'll be cold. The cold weather will bother in Arizona, but the humidity here really bothers me. Hi, Melanie. And then we're going to do, I said we're going to do more pillows, but I get a lot of different questions about quilts. So I thought if we did a quilt along start to finish some basic patchwork, a little advanced, a little bit easy. We're just gonna do one of the orophil years. I wanna make sure I can get all 12 months worth of blocks and have them in PDFs and saved for you guys. I'll probably put them on my Patreon, but we'll talk about it more so everyone has access. I know, Lee Allen, I appreciate it. I'm not really sure when we're gonna be through in the San Antonio area. Once my daughter's home from Maryland and we're starting to pack up, I'll do a video of the pods because some of you have never seen a pod, so you're really not sure what that is because we have a lot of international people here. So we'll do a little bit of everything. So you're going to get random videos. You'll get just me talking to the camera. It's going to get to a point where everything's going to get packed up. I'm just going to have my knitting and some embroidery. Yeah, see, I don't like brown. Brown is not my color. But I try not to when I do like quilt swaps and stuff. I don't give things definitives like that because this is cute. I like it. Yeah, we're going to do that. So start thinking if, if you have like stash or if you need to start looking at budgets and stuff, we are going to do a full bedside quilt. You can look at the different Aurifil ones, the different... Once I know, I don't want to say we're going to do the 2024 one until I know I have all the patterns because we're going to do one of the older ones that we have all the blocks already so everyone that is advanced can work ahead and people who need to do it can do it. And we'll do it during a live stream so you can ask questions. I want to do, I've been talking to my youngest, Robbie. He said, I don't think Zoom is what I want, but he says Discord should have what I want so people can actually speak and I can hear them instead of just reading it. And we can show different pictures of stuff on there. People can be seen or not be seen. You can still, you know, be a lurker and stuff like that. So a lot of research like that. 
We're going to be doing pillows. We'll learn different styles of pillow, envelope, zipper. We'll put tassels on it. We'll do the flange. We're going to really hit it hard this year. The shop will close down soon, possibly around the 1st. I want to make sure that, of course, Jody gets her bag, that all the Valentine Hearts projects are in there. So anyone who wants those things has a chance to get them before I close the shop. The shop will not reopen until I've been in Arizona long enough to unpack the shop items and the packing supplies and stuff like that. Yeah, I've heard so many good things about Discord. He uses it for his Dungeons and Dragons groups. So there's going to be, because right now I get busy and I forget to look up. So people can talk among themselves out loud or you can still type and stuff. I just don't know how to use it. So to be able to show anyone else how to use it, I need to know how to use it. So we have a big year coming up. We just need to get past this move. The Bowl Cozies is going to be the first one. The first one, Bowl Cozy. I have a couple things. I need to make a couple test ones, but since you'll have all these other videos, you, as I mentioned, I have some embroidery kits that I'm taking. Um, my daughter and one of her best friends, they're going to, her best friend is teaching herself how to crochet. My daughter, I taught her how to crochet years ago, like when she was 16. And she crocheted doilies like crazy with the fine thread. So they're going to do a granny square afghan together. My daughter's going to make complicated ones. Her friend's going to make simple ones. And they're going to swap. So now, of course, I've got to make a new a granny square afghan. There's a zigzag. No. There's a flying geese granny square afghan that I'm going to do. So on the days that I don't have my stuff, we might just crochet granny squares, or we could crochet uh, dishcloths just while talking. So it's going to be more of a hangout. Yeah, I have, like I said, I have my books. I'm good, right? So I have, I've been practicing in 2023 so that when this big creative boost came up, I'm good. So I have my planner. I have everything written out. I've been doing really good about crossing out things. This is like find the the Riley Blake thing. So I have my Etsy stuff that I want to put in the shop. I have all of my YouTube things. So I have it all written down and I'm getting really good at hunkering down and following my schedule. I'm even going to start doing shorts and posting more on Instagram because as a business person, as a small business owner now, I really need to kind of pump it up. And I feel like it's been rough, you know, it's been a rough four years for me. So I, I want to, I feel better now. I feel like the depression is pretty much gone now. So I want to, I want to do more and I want to get back to who I used to be. Yeah, so they're teach. so <laughs> my daughter was in Iowa at the time or Maryland. No, I think she was in Maryland. Her friend was in Fort Myers, which is the next town over from me. And I'm here and I get like text messages and phone calls at like 10 o'clock at night. And they're like, when you do a slip stitch, do you do this? And how do you do this? And she, as a new crocheter, her, her rows were kind of going, you know, in different directions. And she started with 10 stitches, ended up with 20, went down to eight. So I gave her different videos to do that. But it's kind of like, I tell my daughter and my daughter tells her friend. We haven't known each other enough for her to feel comfortable to talk to me. So it's been kind of interesting. But once we're, my daughter and I are together in the same house, it'll be easier for her to help her friend out. So it's going to be really fun teaching them about Ravelry and all the fun things you can find on there. So I'm really excited for this year. Some things might not happen. Some things I'm not even thinking about could happen. So it's going to be really great. I have all my yarn here. It's just some of it's packed up in the Dollar Tree uh, vacuum bags. I packed my stuff up prior to June of 2023. And those vacuum sealed bags are still sealed. Just to let you know how good they are. Speaking of which, I am doing the Advent again with my friend this year. We're going to do the Friend to Friend Advent. But I am going to also put Advent 
bundle package into my Etsy shop. We've talked about it back and forth a little bit. I talked with my friend a lot. And now whenever I purchase something for her advent box, I'm purchasing four other. So I'm going to have four advents that are going to be going up in my shop sometime next year, August or September, so that when you see me at Christmas doing the advent and I show you this is what I sent my friend, four of you will be opening the same thing or something a little similar. I might want to do something a little special for my friend, you know, but it's going to be like that. So for those of you that were possibly interested in it, I have decided that right now as it stands, it's a go. It's gonna be a mixture of things I've purchased. Yes, some of them from Amazon already. Things from the Dollar Tree that have a value and purpose. You've seen what I've given my friend. And then some handmade things. So things you've seen me make during the tutorials here on YouTube throughout 2024 could be in your advent. As a little tip, if you see me make five of something, like if you have a Whip It Wednesday and I show you five of these zipper pouches, it's a good bet that that's probably going into the advent, especially if it doesn't go into my Etsy shop. But that's it. We've been talking for a long time. We're coming up on three hours now. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today, for always coming back and hanging out with me, even when I've been having some off moments with this crazy move that's been going on for like nine months now. So I really appreciate everyone's help within the comments and for, you know, the sweet messages you guys send for the people that go back and watch the previous videos. I just love this little community. So I started as a crocheter. I taught myself to crochet and then I taught myself to knit. We can do crochet. I think what's going to happen as I was, I put some thought into this. Just one more thing. There's always one more thing, Robin. YouTube is very, you have a scrappy fabric quilting channel. You need to stay that. If you veer off, it kind of messes things up. So what I can do is I can put things on my Patreon page as free to everyone, to the public. So my patrons will have their things. But if you're like, Robin, can you do a granny square with me? Come on, please, Robin, please, please, please. In the past, I've always said, no, I'm sorry. Most of the time, I will send you to a crochet channel. The crochet crowd is really good at teaching you how to keep the ends even. So that's one thing, that's what I sent to my daughter's friend. But we can crochet during a live stream. I can put crochet videos up on Patreon and it won't affect the algorithm here. So that's the balance I found this year. So if you guys want to sign up for Patreon as a free person, I'm glad you got to hang out with us too, Davi. I've had a great time today. I love sewing. These are my favorite things to sew. So if you want to start figuring out Patreon and getting a free membership, Amy has a, a Patreon page. She's just recently started up. She's doing, I think she did live Zoom recently. I usually don't, I don't, I tell you honestly, I don't know how to Zoom. I've never Zoomed. There was a PBS show, Zoom, 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 way back when I used to watch that. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the things that don't fit into the quilting and we'll put it on Patreon. And that way uh, YouTube can't complain. I'm so glad you liked it, Janice. I am really great. If you can't sleep at night, put on one of my earlier, longer videos. I had a nice, relaxing, quiet, slow, southern draw to them. And I've been told that I put people to sleep in a nice way. And then if you're doing chores, pop on a live stream. And before you know it, you'll be done with your chores, even though it's laundry and dishes and vacuuming. So that's it. I'm really going to push the button now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Make sure you go check out the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and check out Amy Dement's channel. You're going to find something you love. And when you get there, watch when they talk about other YouTubers or they put a link down below in the description box. You can usually click the link and it'll take you to someone else. So if anyone else is hanging out with Missouri Star Quilt Company, I don't know if it's live or recorded, but I will be watching right along with you because I'm pretty sure this is the one that I've been looking forward to. Whoop, where are you? All right, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. We'll see you later.